520 years ago, the world changed completely. Where once there was balance, now it has been replaced by chaos. Modern technology and civilizations have collapsed. As a consequence, there were monsters that destroyed everything they saw. Fortunately, energy in the form of life force, heaven and earth had been revived. Ancient cultivation and martial arts became the hope for humanity's survival. Starlight Base, the rays of the sun shrouded the base. The martial arts academy was bustling with life. The students listened attentively to their teacher. Martial arts starts from the foundation. With diligence and practice, any of them will manage to surpass the limits and become martial arts masters. The young coach was ready to demonstrate and teach 18 forms of tempering, and he began to demonstrate the first form of hardening. The little pupils were quite saddened by the news. Their parents had taught them hardening, and they didn't want to start at the bottom. But this arrangement did not suit the teacher. They were children, and they should know everything from the bottom up. Suddenly, the teacher noticed a student who had drifted away from the group altogether. The boy practiced on his own, as if he didn't notice anyone. Feng Yun is an orphan with nothing behind him. He had no one to teach him martial arts, so he tries hard. That was something to be proud of, but it looked really pathetic on the teacher's part. The coach again called the attention of all the students to do the hardening exercises, and if not, 180 push-ups. Such a suggestion had an instant effect, and they immediately began to do what the teacher demanded. All the students stood closer to the teacher, but Feng Yun was completely behind and even turned away to better focus. Feng Yun had no basics or resources, and the future of a martial arts master was a ghostly hope, as seen by the teacher. The lesson was over. Now everyone can rest and come back in half an hour for free practice. All the kids were leaving, but Feng Yun continued practicing. It was important for him to learn all of today's material, as the teacher showed everything too quickly and it was harder to memorize. This technique was too weak. After being reborn, Feng Yun did not have any system, which was something of a problem. Feng Yun was born in the 21st century on Earth, and then he was reborn from an adult guy to a 14-year-old teenager in a parallel world. One day on his way to work, the mirror pendant around Feng Yun's neck suddenly shone, and he was unknowingly reborn. In his homeworld, he was into martial arts, but here, without a true purpose, all practices are useless. Even if he managed to get into a martial arts academy, all he has to do is start his training from the very basics that even children have mastered. In other words, it is only a warm-up in the martial arts world. If Feng Yun only practiced it, he wouldn't even reach the peak of martial arts in 10,000 years. A guy walked into the hall who was immediately noticed by everyone in the room with a kind of delight. They recognized him as Lin Qian, a high school student. Lin Qian is the top student of Highland Academy. A few days ago he passed the certification and was accepted into the Academy of the Inner City Starlight Base Academy. And the guy was only 19 years old. He was the offspring of a great family. From his childhood he had cultivated in the medicinal baths. Then he had built a strong foundation. Feng Yun was told that he wouldn't even be able to reach his level at the age of 30 as he would be kicked out of the academy. Lin Qian walked past Feng Yun with a perfectly straight posture. As soon as he walked in, he immediately became everyone's attention. Just as suddenly, something happened to Feng Yun's pendant. A mirror space was formed and endless projection was activated. The young man's face froze with surprise. An inscription to Project Lin Qian popped up. What do you mean he has to take this action? Feng Yun was confused, for it was not clear what the consequences would be from this. Something opened before his eyes that blinded his eyes with its light. And soon Lin Chen's reflection could be seen. The guy was wearing an unusual form, as if he was wearing armor. In his hand was a katana, but his eyes did not express anything, for they were black. Is this mirror really Feng Yun's system? Just as he reached for the mirror with his hand, someone's small hand carelessly slapped his arm. A girl began to emerge from the mirror who was not happy that the guy was groping her with dirty hands. To the stranger it seemed like trivial rules of propriety. But for Feng Yun, this was not a trivial situation. Like it's not every day that you see a girl appearing from a mirror. Realizing this, the stranger introduced herself as a mirror. They were in the mirror space, and the girl was its embodiment. But Feng Yun preferred to call the girl Jing, and asked for a more detailed explanation. From the name, it could be understood that it was a space in the mind, created by an infinite projection mirror. In the mirror, Feng Yun could see his current characteristics. He could read that he had no talents, skills, weapons, tools, and only 18 forms of tempering practice. Feng Yun chose Lin Qian as the first object to scan. He had quite a lot of abilities and things. It was similar to the drops falling from him, but only if Feng Yun won, and not 100%.
The first fight should have already started since Feng Yun had already understood everything, which was something that should have been understood. Therefore, the first opponent came out of the mirror. But the guy had two more questions he wanted to ask, and so paused the fight. Jin said that this space was in his mind. But what about Feng Yun's body right now? The guy was most likely passed out, although it was a normal state. In the future, he will be able to do several things at once. If a battle awaited him now, could he die here? The answer was, of course not. A battle is about to happen, which will happen in the mind, though it will feel like a real one. The pain of death here will be worse than the real one, so better a real death than such a life. But one could lower the difficulty. From an initial rank master to an ordinary person like Feng Yun, it was in accordance with the rules. In any case, there's no one here to call the guy a coward, but Yun didn't think so. Feng Yun didn't want to experience death on his own skin, so he asked to lower the difficulty slightly. Except some bearded man told him that it wouldn't work that way. A very young Feng Yun was playing a console game with a grown man. The latter was getting it that a real man doesn't take the easy way out. If you choose the easy mode, you can miss out on a lot of fun. Those memories put him on more cheerful thoughts. Now he didn't think to change a thing. Jin supported him as best she could, only for the young man to put aside his fear and step onto the thorny path. These were all fictitious memories, which Feng Yun had noticed. And now he was already demanding that Lin Qian's cultivation be lowered to the level of an ordinary person. The guys were now at the same cultivation stage, but the opponent was still stronger than Feng Yun. You could bet he would die several times before the end of the class. But the young man was sure he would never die once. Only problem was, he had a katana, and it must have been very sharp. His weapon chopped everything in its path, but what could Feng Yun, who only had a rag uniform, do against it? He had no choice but to run away, except that Jin forgot to clarify something. The location in mirror space could be changed, but since the guy was busy, the girl decided to make the decision herself. Her choice was a forest location. This could have been to his advantage, but before he knew it, he was in the woods and ended up hitting the nearest tree. He began to react quickly, however, as his opponent didn't wait for him to come up with a plan. They darted between all the trees. Only sparks could be seen from the katana strikes. Fortunately, our hero was still alive, but there were a lot of cut trees behind him. But this couldn't last for long. Sooner or later, Lin Qin would find Feng Yun and easily finish him off. The young man should find a way to attack. Feng Yun sat under the stump, and Jin giggled as if it was a game to her. She thought it was better to kill him here than in reality. Yun continued to run through the forest, causing fatigue to gradually accumulate in his body. Half an hour should have been enough time to prepare for the attack. In addition, the enemy was armored, which should have exhausted him even faster. But only that can't be relied on. Maybe he's tougher than Feng Yun. The guy should think in a different direction. He can't penetrate the armor. It remains to find a weakness in them. Ling Chen attacks over and over again, not giving him any time to breathe. But luckily, Feng Yun manages to dodge the attack. The enemy was getting out of the way of the attacks and as a result, Feng Yun was not in an advantageous position. The young man actually risked getting injured or dying in his mind. The opponent would not spare him. The correct thing for Lin Chen to do would be to turn the body of the attack direction, using the inertia of the sword to attack either the chest or the head. Then the enemy's weak point must be lack of experience. In the past life, Feng Yun's advantage over such strong fellows was the rich experience of actual combat, when they only had rich experience practicing exercises. Lin Qian was really strong, but Feng Yun was much more experienced. The young man had managed to roll him onto his stomach and was now stepping on his back with his foot. He had no weapons, so he used whatever he could get his hands on. And today, it was a huge boulder that would give Feng Yun his first subconscious victory. Feng Yun had really won. Although Jin doubted him, since he was just running away in the beginning. The young man had expended a lot of energy. Did anything fall out of the opponent that could be useful? You didn't have to worry about that, because the first time you kill each projected enemy, you have a 100% chance of dropping loot. And drumroll! The reward for winning is Jin's first kiss. It seemed that such a reward would make the young man faint. But fortunately, it was just a joke. Feng Yun had successfully completed his first kill. So what was his reward? The first level tempering turtle and snake technique was exactly the same as Lin Qian's. This was the first reward he deserved. Right in his hands was a turtle and snake forging of the first level. This kind of forging is a hundred times better than the 18 forms that everyone practiced. Its value is 30,000 yuan. This kind of forging is in no way comparable to free trash. Feng Yun should say, accept, and he would immediately study her, which is all he did. At that moment, unnoticed by himself, his breathing changed. His voice seemed ancient, as if from a slumbering turtle. 
as if from a snake slumbering in the depths of the ooze for thousands of years. This power was majestic, and Feng Yun realized its full power, hence he gratefully accepted it. This is the power he earned himself, by his own skills and bravery. Now Feng Yun's strength and blood qi had increased, but in reality, it only seemed like this to him. He had only just learned this technique and had never cultivated it. He should relax and unfocus to return to reality. It was in reality that he would be able to diligently cultivate this power. As soon as Feng Yun opened his eyes, he saw his teacher looming over him, who was looking at his disciple with an irritated and worried look every now and then. After traveling like this, the teacher seemed like a ghost. Feng Yun recoiled in surprise, however. What else would you expect when you just woke up? It was lunchtime, and Feng Yun was still sitting here under the pretense that he was practicing. In any case, he should have gone home now since there was an unscheduled meeting at the teacher's. The little boy thanked his teacher and ran off at a gallop to his home. Before the student left, the teacher decided to ask the question, why was he working so hard? It was obvious that the front line was broken, which meant that resources had to be saved. At the meeting, a date would be set for an extraordinary exam, and if Feng Yun failed, he would be expelled. These words rang in his head the whole way. The way home was not easy, as there was almost a crush on the street. There were a lot of people, but after half an hour he finally made it home. That home was the Dawn Orphanage. What could be better than a big family? As soon as he reached the door, it was opened by a girl of incredible beauty. Yellow eyes, purple hair, lilac clothes, and a cute bow on her hair all made her look extraordinary. What surprised her was that Feng Yun had returned early. The sudden appearance of the girl embarrassed him, his cheeks flushed red. He explained his early arrival to Xiaolan, but just why did she also come back so early? Xiaolan explained that their class teacher's son died on the front lines, so classes were cancelled. Jin had been watching her ward the entire time. It was clear that this was Feng Yun's childhood sweetheart. The girl was really good looking although not as good as Jin in her estimation. Feng Yun hadn't even had lunch today, and so he asked Xiao Lan if there was anything to eat. Fortunately, Xiao had bought meat yesterday and was happy to cook her roommate's favorite pork stew. This is also an opportunity to celebrate Feng Yun's first day at the academy. The braised pork is similar in flavor to the Sichuan-style braised pork from Feng Yun's past world. For an orphanage, it is quite a luxurious dish. The dish was cooked deliciously. Feng Yun couldn't even get enough. It didn't work out so well last time because she used a different pepper, but now Shaolan had learned her lesson and took a different pepper. Jin continued to watch everything that was going on and already wanted to try this dish herself. Jin also thought that if he was a real man, he would eat all the pepper, and yet what she saw made her very angry. But as they say, out of sight, out of mind, Jin raved about getting out of this place and into the real world. A new location opened in front of Feng Yun. It was a desert where there was nothing but sand and dry plants. The young man was once again fighting Lin Qian, again without weapons, but with absolute self-confidence and strength. And now the other was clearly losing. This was already the 25th fight. Jin tried to encourage her ward, saying, Don't you have enough pork stew? Once again, a different location. But the opponents were the same. This was the 44th fight. Lin Qian was losing, falling into the abyss of lava. Fight number 52 once again ended in Feng Yun's victory. He trapped his opponent and began to strangle him like a snake. But unfortunately, the score of the fights ended up being unequal. Feng Yun had only 24 victories and 57 defeats to the death. And one time, they had fought for so long that they had settled for a draw. These statistics were not very satisfying. But we must admit that this was also Jin's fault. Since she had decided to slightly raise her opponent's strength to the pre-master elementary rank. However, the young man did quite well. Mirror didn't like the fact that the guy was constantly trying to gain loot, like in the game, instead of raising his cultivation. But it was actually quite difficult to cultivate to break through to the next level, so Yun wanted to knock out the pills first, and then start cultivating. The argument stopped at the fact that Jin made it clear that the pills were already there. Feng Yun was too engrossed in his battles that he didn't even notice the alert from Jin, to which the guy objected. Right now, the girl's hand was holding a vial of top-notch blood chi medicine. There were 10 pills in the vial. Their market value was 3,000 yuan each. They should be enough to break through to the initial rank pre-master level. The blood key pills are made of a mixture of over a dozen precious medicines, contains primordial key, and is the initial and most commonly used cultivation pill. Feng Yun should have found a deserted place so that he wouldn't be disturbed by anyone. 
taking the pill to cultivate the tortoise and snake tempering. The young man was a little frustrated that in 24 victories, he had only managed to knock out a pill. Well, there's also some ordinary clothes dropped out, but they're too big on Feng Yun. Anyway, he can sell it. Feng Yun had a guest, Xiao Lan, who stood under the door but did not knock. Xiao knew that a guy shouldn't be disturbed during cultivation, but she was worried because yesterday he didn't eat dinner, today he didn't eat breakfast. What should she do? The angry Feng Yun opened the door and thus frightened his roommate. The matter was bad. In the future, he should cultivate daily. After all, he was grinding all night today. Should we establish measures to prevent addiction to online games? For example, limiting it to only five fights a day. Jin saw Feng Yun's real world through his eyes. Now he knew it and thought that he should close his eyes while taking a bath. Shaolan stood outside the door completely confused by this behavior of Yun. He kept shouting something, but it was in Jin's direction. Although from the outside, it looked like he was saying these unpleasant things to Shaolan. He was out of his mind and only noticed the girl when he said too much. A friend was very worried about him and this behavior on his part brought tears. Feng Yun treasured his friendship with Shaolan, so he hurriedly explained that he wasn't talking to her. However, she couldn't hold a grudge for long and immediately smiled as she brought him his breakfast. Xiao really cared about him, but he didn't have time to eat breakfast and had to go to class right now. It seems the original owner of this body was very close to Xiaolan. The guy found an abandoned park in the outer city that didn't have a soul in it. It was the perfect place for him. But it was a pity that he had classes in the morning, so he would have to cultivate in the evening. The road to the academy was a long one, and he spent a lot of time on it. He had time now anyway, and he immediately pulled out the very same vial, and roughly speaking, swallowed 3,000 yuan. The young man sat down in the lotus posture and began to apply the technique of tempering the tortoise and snake, namely building the basics. Like a dormant turtle and like a sleeping serpent, it was the absorption of primordial chi, the quenching of the body. Nine days later, the improvement was visible on the face. The boy had clearly matured both physically and mentally. Now he had a power that burned in his hands like a blue flame. This was Feng Yun's first step on the path in cultivation, becoming an initial rank pre-master. The last key blood pill of the entire vial was left. If you did the math, the guy had spent 27,000 yuan, which was a cosmic amount for him. The plan was to return home to have dinner and defeat Lin Qian a few times again to knock out something valuable and thus make up for the losses. When the young man had raised his level to the pre-master primary rank, it was no problem for him to defeat Lin Qian. He did it with ease, as if it cost him nothing to win. Noticing this, Jin felt that indulging in teaching was teacher laziness. Therefore, she immediately raised Lin Qian's cultivation to pre-master middle rank. It was obvious that the opponent was definitely not of the initial rank. Feng Yun immediately realized that this was the work of Jin's hands. However, he didn't care because he was confident of his victory. He now had much more speed and strength than before. That means that with this kind of data, Lin Qian is no match for him. He will easily destroy him again. A level 1 technique dropped chopping sword. Would Feng Yun accept it? This kind of drop was very rare. The drop chance really grew, and immediately a good loot fell out. Naturally, the young man took it. A chopping sword could concentrate its power on the sword and strike fiercely. In front of Feng Yun's eyes, he had years of experience practicing the chopping sword, which looked like a dream. The young man's eyes burned with the brightest flame. He couldn't believe that this sword now belonged to him. For the sake of interest, he picked up the Chinese chopsticks, then ordered the chopping sword to chop them up. Now there were solid crumbs left of the sticks. The sword was obeying its new master, which had just been proven. It was a pity, without a real sword, only half of the full power could be used. But now, Feng Yun must be much stronger than Lin Qian. Lin Qiang at the time of projection had just started learning martial arts. Now, one could see the huge advantage of projection. In an instant, Feng Yun had obtained all of Lin Qiang's accumulated experience of practicing the chopping sword. As a reminder, the school has real swords. Right tomorrow, Feng Yun is going to put them to the test. In front of Feng Yun was a small of rack, with different kinds of swords. There were only three kinds of swords and they all cost a lot of money. One sword cost as much as a pill, and that was the simplest one, the one on the far left. The guy couldn't afford it, but what do you do if you need a gun and don't have the money? Because of such prices, his anger had no limit, because he could get these things by grind. In any case, he could use some money too. In front of Feng Yun, the huge building of the martial arts academy, Hailan, opened up. Hailan means aquamarine. The young man walked into the classroom very angry. 
he was still held by resentment for such prices. Still in a bad mood, he entered the equipment room for the newcomers, which housed many weapons as well as armor. All of this was available to him right now. Feng Yun could choose any weapon he liked, but for the duration of his training. The first thing that caught his eye was the sword he had already prepared to try out and picked up. This sword has not been cared for, and its condition is not very good, to say the least. Such an iron sword can be worth about 3,000 wen. Junior students are not given the attention they deserve, but this sword should be enough to try out the strengths of the chopping sword strike technique. The mannequin standing next to him was the victim of Feng Yun, who didn't think twice, and decided to try out the technique right away. The first attempt was a crushing success. Feng Yun was able to chop the dummy apart with ease. But with the same, the sword crumbled like bread into crumbs. In his hands, the katana began to shatter. Anger overwhelmed the young man more and more, and he threw the hilt of the katana to the floor with a crack. The noise in the vault didn't go unnoticed, and a teacher who was passing by immediately entered here. The first thing the trainer noticed was a mannequin chopped into pieces. Who knows whether he would admire it or get angry. The trainer immediately realized that it was a rank 1 martial art, the chopping strike technique. He picked up one of the lying objects in his hands and only looked at it in surprise. Moving closer to the table he saw a piece of katana and a flask with a note. The note said the flask was payment for a tainted sword. From behind this flask, a single pill flew out. As a trainer he knew very well that it was a blood chi pill. The teacher continued to squint in surprise at the hilt of the severed katana. Such destructive power. Was it possible to achieve such a thing without attaining a level of mastery in the chopping technique? Teacher assumed that this was Lin Qian's work. The blood chi pill was spent. Feng Yun wished he could go back and get more. But he couldn't continue to shake things out of Lin Qian. After all, there was probably a limit to the number of items that could be dropped from one person. Feng Yun's wish was that he would first project all the teachers and then the students. Or would he bully the students first and then challenge the teachers? Feng Yun visited his sister, Xiao Lan, who had taken a job as a cashier to earn money for the orphanage so that he could attend the martial arts academy in peace. This time the young man was a little delayed, he explained his delay as a small incident at school. It was the calmest sunny day in the city, until a huge cloud gathered over the buildings. Huge birds began to fly by, and carp over the heads of the world's inhabitants. The bird's voice was shattering windows in apartment buildings. The windows literally cracked. And then they shattered into shards, hitting people who passed by. The shards that fell were huge, and if they hit a person, they could seriously injure them. One of those large glass shards flew straight at Xiao Lan. If she didn't bounce off, she would be in trouble. The girl didn't bounce back, but luckily there was a guy nearby who easily caught that shard right above her head. Feng Yun easily kicked this shard straight into the trash can. Xiao Lan was fine, but she still couldn't get over what had happened and occasionally looked at Feng Yun who had saved her with embarrassment. Feng Yun had always given the impression of a weak guy, but he didn't seem like that now, the girl noticed. He might have actually seemed weak, but his personality was not even close to that. Feng Yun always knew what he was doing and why he was doing it. His actions were always filled with confidence, and this time too. Above the people flew the very bird that had broken the windows with its cry. It was an eagle and of impressive size. It seemed as if one flap of its wings could bring a strong wind. No one knew why or why this eagle had come, but one thing was certain. It was not with good intentions. Feng Yun had heard of such monsters, but this was the first time he had seen one. Many people's lives would be endangered if it infiltrated the main area. Feng Yun certainly wasn't going to leave the beast on its own and pursued it stubbornly. Xiao Lan ran after the guy in confusion, at the chance to help in any way possible. This eagle was not so simple, and especially his yell. The bird was about to attack, but in an instant, something flew into it, striking its heart. It was a rank 3 black golden eagle monster, and it was now lying on the ground, bleeding heavily. In this world, a rank 1 monster is equivalent to a low-ranked martial artist, while a rank 3 is equivalent to a high-ranked martial artist. A bird is stronger than a human of the same rank, but was killed by a single arrow. Is this really the work of a martial arts master, but I wonder what rank? Right now, Feng Yun could project a black golden eagle monster. Would he risk doing so? Feng Yun was in anticipation. He couldn't believe that he could project a dead monster. The black golden eagle looked really majestic and dangerous. Would the guy be able to defeat it? The projection worked. It was amazing that it could even project a monster. But what could come out of the bird if it won? Feng Yun had returned home, eaten dinner, and now began his usual ritual. By looking in the mirror where the black golden eagle would be projected, 
you could find out what items would fall out of it. The items that would fall out were as follows. Feathers, flesh, and blood, and claws. The items the bird had were much smaller than Lin Qian's, but they were of high quality. Feng Yun couldn't wait to start fighting the Black Golden Eagle sooner rather than later. He requested that Jin set the opponent's strength to the levels of a low-ranked martial artist. Well, the test began in the desert where there was a completely empty space. But now Feng Yun had a huge advantage. He could simulate weapons in the mirror space. The boy had wanted to practice with a sword for a long time and now the opportunity had come. The Golden Eagle was many times bigger behind Feng Yun with its size, but the guy was more agile and nimble. The Black Golden Eagle was literally starting to spurt blood. Soon, it fell into pieces. It had no paws and no huge wings like before, all of which had been cut off by Feng Yun's sword. Ten minutes later, Jin declared victory in the battle against the Black Golden Eagle. Since this was the first victory, the item's fallout was guaranteed. This time, the flesh and blood of the Golden Eagle fell out. This was really great, because the guy was worried that after he exhausted the pills, he wouldn't have the resources to cultivate. Pleased with this outcome, Feng Yun once again wanted another challenge. After fighting the Black Golden Eagle, the guy challenged Lin Qian five more times but still got nothing. In any case, he now had the flesh and blood of a black golden eagle that he could use to cultivate. Who knows if it would be much more effective than the pills. Feng Yun prepared many chests and flasks on his bed. Into chests and flasks he separated flesh and blood so that he could make good use of them in the future. In flasks he kept the blood of a black golden eagle, and in the chests was hidden flesh. The projection mirror had thought of everything and prepared these things for storage in advance. The first thing Feng Yun decided to do was to check how the monster blood works. All monsters are the result of a surge from the initial key of heaven and earth. So their blood is much more valuable than any medicine. Feng Yun was racked with unbearable pain as if he was about to burst into pieces. He must process all this energy as soon as possible. Feng Yun had used the turtle snake body hardening technique ten times. The blood of the black golden eagle is really effective. A small drop is equal to about five pills of blood qi. With such a source of resources, the young man would quickly reach the level of a high-ranked reserve martial artist. Even Lin Qian can't afford such a luxury as using the flesh and blood of monsters to practice. Still, the corpse of a monster comparable to a high-ranked martial artist is worth more than a million yuan. Such benefits can only be enjoyed by the elite of great families. Feng Yun stood in complete concentration amongst the trees and bushes where there was no one. The young man had fallen into a complete meditative state and was only calmly breathing in and out of the air. And then there was a scream! The energy began to pour out of his body as if he was holding it back. He tamed his energy for a while, but then it burst out like a hurricane. After a month of training, Feng Yun was about to break through to the level of a middle-ranked martial artist. The place he was in was truly peaceful. The forest gave him the cleanest air. There was no one here. Feng Yun could train in peace. But now it was time to return. The young man was already near the orphanage when he saw another guy in front of the door who seemed to be waiting for something. The guy noticed someone watching him and greeted the acquaintance, who immediately ran towards him. It was Brother Xu who hadn't visited in a long time and Feng Yun cordially invited him over. Ever since the guy joined the Floating Cloud Society, the head thinks he's on the wrong path and constantly squirms his face when he sees Zuya. This organization was similar to a gangster underground organization. So why did Xu come here? In the community, Shu had learned several martial arts techniques and managed to become a junior leader, so he didn't have time to look after the orphanage, but now time might be scarce. And he also knew that Feng Yun had entered a martial arts academy, and once he mastered the basics, who leader would be able to teach him a couple techniques to entrust to watch over Feng Yun. This guy was still so caring and proper, but right now, he was weaker than Feng Yun. The young man decided to enter the mirror space and wished to project Shu. Jin couldn't do that as he was too weak, so there was no point in projecting him. Yun decided to continue challenging the Black Golden Eagle and Lin Qian. Feng Yun had been fighting the same opponents for quite some time. Jin wondered if he was bored with them. The young man decided to do two things at the same time, eat and fight. It would definitely save him time, but Xiaolan didn't understand what was going on with the guy. Normally he'd eat his food with both cheeks, but today, he looked worried. Lunch was organized by the principal. It would be hard not to notice Feng Yun's behavior as he dropped the food on the floor, and literally on automatic apologized for such behavior. However, the principal didn't hold a grudge. Feng Yun was to be congratulated, he had obtained a low-ranked gold attribute talent. 
This was the most valuable thing that Lin Qian had. For a whole month, Feng Yun had fought with Lin Qian to finally knock this thing out. A martial artist with an attribute is much stronger than a normal martial artist. Only one in a hundred martial artists are born with an attribute. It was truly a rarity. The Academy mentioned attributes, but they didn't say one thing about them. There are ten types of attributes. Gold, wood, water, fire, earth, wind, thunder, ice, light, and darkness. Each of them gave a person different abilities. Feng Yun was already eager to see the power of such an attribute. However, Jin did not bother the young man and immediately presented him with his prize. He immediately accepted the gift and decided to activate it. The attribute blurred with a golden haze between his hands. But did he feel the change? He seemed to be wrapped up in the feeling that he had made an unfathomable connection with the outside world. A very vague connection. The energy that came from reversing his blood chi was much more powerful than before. These two things he felt at this moment. Jin reacted as if that was exactly what he was supposed to feel. Attributes do not reveal themselves to their full potential unless they are practiced in a martial art that suits them. For example, the Black Golden Eagle also has a wind talent. If Feng Yun mastered two attribute talents at once, he would be able to obey far above ordinary martial artists. Having such tremendous capabilities and not trying hard at his craft, Feng Yun would be no different from trash. He understood this perfectly and didn't miss a single opportunity, which was why he was now a middle-ranked martial artist. Low-ranked martial artists can utilize energy, while middle-ranked martial artists have a much stronger body. Now, normally sharp weapons couldn't hurt Feng Yun. How nice it felt to become stronger after all. However, the skin is whiter and softer than before, and because in his past life, he envied people who used expensive skincare products and cosmetic needles. But it was already too late. If Feng Yun didn't return to the orphanage soon, he would be scolded by the principal again. Except that the young man was caught off guard by people who were running with guns somewhere straight ahead, as if they were catching up with someone. Feng Yun felt that such things were best ignored, as such events often happened outside the main area. Only God knows which side is good. Men in t-shirts and carrying machetes were running after Shu. But what happened after all? Feng Yun had noticed his brother and was now shouting after him to notice him as well. Feng Yun's good acquaintance ran away from the people with weapons like an animal from the hunters. He tried not to stop for a moment. The young man was already waiting for him near the tree, as well as his assailants. 30 meters to go. Another 20 meters. Finally, 10 meters. What was Feng Yun planning to do? He sensed it was time and immediately rushed to help. The familiar boys missed each other. Xu ran as fast as he could away from his enemies while Yun ran towards the unexpected guests. Just when they were about 10 meters apart from each other, Shun turned around as if he had come to his senses. The young man literally flew towards his friend's enemies. They were clearly no problem for him. The first type in the t-shirt, the bravest, decided to try to strike first. He had two hacksaws in his hand. Feng Yun was attacking the bandits with his bare hands, but no one knew of his advantage. The first thing the young man did was to take his attacker's hand and clench it tightly to the point of pain, so much so that he twisted it. The bandit's knives were literally flying apart like unwanted metal. Feng Yun repeatedly struck at his enemy without even giving him a chance to regain his senses. The young man was not so simple, and it was clearly unexpected for them. He looked like an ordinary 14-year-old boy. Who would have thought he could do such a thing? The enemies were not as confident as before, but they did not want to retreat. Feng Yun picked up the trophy of the defeated enemy, a single knife. He was ready to use the chopping sword technique. Well, he finally had a chance to practice swordsmanship now. Feng Yun, holding his sword with confidence, resolutely enters the battle. His eyes sparkle with excitement, and each powerful strike is aimed at knocking his opponents down. He deftly maneuvers to create a whirlwind of steel, conquering the battlefield with his skill. The opponents don't even stand a chance, all defeated as one. His energy and strength were so powerful that Feng Yun's victory was not hard to predict. Zhu watched the unfamiliar-looking guy from the side. What he had conjured up was intriguing, of course. Who was this incredibly strong guy? However, it didn't take him long to guess, as he knew the silhouette of his close friend Feng Yun well. It could seem as if he was in a dream, because where would a young man be on a night like this? Feng Yun decided to make it clear right away, so he warned that he would not ask why he was being chased, but in return, he asked them not to talk about him at the orphanage. But now the young man began to wonder a little differently. What was the price of the knife? Xu replied that it was only 50 yuan. 
Realizing that the knife was of no value, Feng Yun threw it away as trash and asked his brother not to say anything about it again. Xu only looked at him silently. It was a new day. Feng Yun was dressed in a freshly pressed uniform. He walked through the crowded streets of his new city. There was nothing unusual on the streets until he saw a military vehicle. It was rare to see military equipment in such large cities. Apparently, new soldiers were arriving at the academy. There were many cars, and they were all heading to the same place where Feng Yun was going. The student reached his academy. All the underclassmen were gathering at the designated place for practice. A group of boys stood on the left side and girls on the right side. Absolutely every elementary student was wearing a uniform. Feng Yun was one of the last to arrive, but he could already hear his classmates talking. It had been revealed that the military had come to inspect the underclassmen. Excellent students would be promoted to advanced classes, and those who failed would be expelled. But what the tests would be was unknown. These rumors were very frightening to the students after all. They had only arrived a few days ago. Chen was the leader, and he was the only one out of everyone who didn't look worried. The students were worried and therefore whispering among themselves. The man shouted, causing silence among them. An older, slender man stood next to an older man. It looked like they were waiting for the students to calm down so they could begin the ordeal. It got much quieter, and the uniformed man moved forward. It was as if he was worried, too. But when you have a lot of students looking at you, excitement has no place to be. Feng Yun recognized this man as an expert. The guy immediately turned to his subconscious mind. Jin realized that this was a true iron and blood soldier. Such an opponent would really be beneficial to Feng Yun's development. Therefore, it was a decision to project him right now. And now the silhouette of the soldier could be seen right in the mirror. If his silhouette was so intimidating, what was he like in battle? Zhou Kunlun, 35 years old, level, a true mid-ranked martial artist. His loot contained a large number of useful items, as well as two bottles of blood chi pills, a new alloy knife, two bottles of healing pills, a military uniform, and practical combat experience. Such a set of loot was very inspiring, and Feng Yun decided to immediately challenge Zhou Kunlun. There was no time to waste. Feng Yun immediately rushed into battle against the soldier who was about to have the test of his life. The young man started off well, and he decided to make his first attack with his foot. Yes, only the effect was bad from such an attack. Zhou easily intercepted his leg with his one hand. It seemed as if it was a battle of equals, since neither one had a weapon. But the soldier with years of training was still stronger than the young man. He was able to throw Feng Yun's body a decent distance away. But was this really Jin's doing again? After all, she likes to make things difficult for her ward. Zhou Kunlun's strength was high, making it doubtful that he was at the level of a mid-level martial artist. His level was definitely higher. The soldier didn't wait for his opponent to recover and react on how he should act. He would once again return to the battle, running closer to Feng Yun. Zhou struck the poor boy with such speed that he did not have time to recover and hardly put a block. Although it is unlikely to help him. After all, now he was being struck by a hail of punches of the second rank of fist overcoming limits. This outcome was expected for Jin, but on the other hand, simply lowering the level of his opponent would make Feng Yun the weakest. Zhou was beating the boy like a punching bag, and there was nothing he could do. He was just a little bit away from fainting. Jin would have no problem lowering Zhou's level to that of an ordinary person. But then Feng Yun would defeat him 100%. Should she do that? Zhu Kunlun would indeed be the chief examiner. The content of the assessment was as follows. Many monsters were prepared for the students. The task was to defeat one of them alone or by forming a team. Students will be graded on the results of the battle. The top 100 will be promoted to senior year, and the top 3 will receive blood chi pills. The students were motivated by this offer because if they passed one exam, they could immediately move up a level. And also, everyone remembered the cost of a single blood chi pill. The examiner pondered the emotions of the children. They were all young, and a lot of them were eager to stay in the academy, but not all of them would be able to. Joe was scrutinizing the crowd of students as if he was already trying to assess them. But now his gaze was fixated on someone. Feng Yun was still in his space, and from the outside it looked like he was scared of the upcoming exam. But such assumptions were foolish, for Feng Yun had already put up a fight of his own that no one even suspected. He was sure that he could handle an ordinary person any way he wanted. Oh, and for the first victory, the item drop was guaranteed. This was the most reasonable thing to do right now, Feng Yun thought, except that he himself will not be satisfied with such a victory. The battle was in full swing. Who would win? Now they were not fighting with fists, 
but with katanas, it seemed as if their odds were equal. But the odds were definitely in Zhou's favor. The palm that reached out to Feng Yun's unprotected side was not of human strength, and seemed to be burning with a fire that could strike the young man to the ground. The named leader among the students immediately seized the moment and decided to create his own team. He was trusted by many classmates and everyone wanted to join him, but places were limited. The boys believed that no one could compare to their leader. After all, everyone saw him as the best in martial arts. And now they were humiliatingly comparing Bai to Feng Yun, who was shaking in front of them, and naturally they thought it was from fear and began to mock even more. Feng Yun was still standing there with his eyes closed when he was approached by Bai, who was wondering if he had let go of his fear. In his universe, everything went on as usual, the battle was going on. Because our young man could not simply accept defeat. Finally, the first item finally fell out. Practical battle experience, which Feng Yun of course extracted. The guys couldn't leave Feng Yun in peace, especially Bai. Because as he thought, a weakling like Feng Yun could greatly increase his authority among the guys. And finally, his classmate woke him up. Only the former lightness and sneer on his face disappeared, as if it had never happened. Observing this picture, one would think that the jester had awakened a dragon. Feng Yun's gaze was more serious than ever, for he had just gained a new and important strength to cultivate. Feng Yun's eyes were literally blazing with fire, if not himself. Such energy was very strong, if not destructive to those around him. The fiery gaze startled the molester, and he immediately jumped back with a loud cry that his classmate was a monster. There were many trucks heading toward the academy building one by one. Some had a grate through which you could see the monster sitting. There were probably monsters in the other trucks as well. All the students walked down that street, but I'm sure when they saw that monster they were in a daze. In the great truck was a shadow cat, a rank one monster. It was very fast, but it also had a weak point, which was the back of its neck. Feng Yun was able to realize this because of the practical battle experience he had learned. Feng Yun had an important exam coming up, and now he was starting to get a headache. He was very happy that he now had combat experience, but the sleepless night was having its effect. His eyes were comparable to the eyes of a panda. If it were possible, Yun would have fallen asleep right here. Right now, all the students followed through the dark entrance to the arena to battle against the monsters. Feng Yun should try his best not to stand out much with his abilities. There were really inexperienced fighters here. What could they do against monsters they had never fought before? Feng Yun, being more experienced and stronger in martial arts, could afford to think like this. Absolutely everyone was scared, even the leader who had just recently mocked Feng Yun. No one knew what they were going to face and it was frightening. The children who had recently entered the martial arts academy would have to determine if they were worthy of further study there. Right now, each student could be seen shivering with fear. But if that fear was not tamed in the arena, the outcome would be clear. Examiner Zhou was thinking the same thing as Feng Yun. All the children were weak because they had no experience at all. But it wasn't surprising. After all, not even a month had passed, and now they would be having a decisive battle with the monster. So it was normal to be afraid in their position. But the war couldn't wait for these children to grow up. With a cup of hot drink in hand, the examiner did just that and watched his future warriors. And once again, he ran his gaze over Feng Yun, who was in a bad state to say the least, and was constantly looking to the sides. This kind of appearance in the exam, Joe thought it was simply shameful. After all, how would this guy fight further? But in any case, it was time to start. The students who will be taking the exam today are numerous. If they feel they can no longer continue, anyone can leave the arena. Also, they can always go to the nearest instructor for help. But it's also important to keep in mind that once they ask for help, they will be considered disqualified. A huge column and students arrived at their destination. In front of them were doors with different numbers. No one could even guess that there was such a place under the school. Only senior students can use this place and challenge the monster. But today, the juniors have an exam here. Feng Yun's ticket numbered 24. That means he needs to enter the appropriate door under that number. He opened the tall iron doors, but before entering he looked inward. The interior was like a prisoner's cell or like a coliseum, where a monster was about to be unleashed. A male voice from above asked Feng Yun why he was alone. Wasn't the purpose of the assessment to exclude less intelligent students? Teaming up in teams would be quite normal. Feng Yun embarrassedly replied that he was too weak, and because of that, they didn't want him on any team. But he didn't really ask to be on any team. The Watcher was only worried about his time. He thought it was all for nothing. 
for if the boy was weak, he would lose anyway. If he decided to do so, he should choose the right equipment and weapons. The choice was quite good. There were many different kinds of weapons and armor in the cabin. Light armor suited him best. While he was getting ready, he was also thinking of a plan on how he would act. The plan was to wait a while, and then pretend to accidentally hit the monster's weak spot. It was time to begin. This type of sword has been used many times by Feng Yun in the mirror space, and is the most effective. Judging from the roar, today's opponent was an iron-armored boar. It was a rank 1 beast that had high defense and strength, with its weak point being its throat. It was the strongest monster among the hundred rank 1 monsters, and he was already half a step away from moving up to rank 2. The beholder gently hinted that it wasn't too late to give up, but Feng Yun warned that he would ask for help if he couldn't win. The beast was huge. If a black golden eagle was several times bigger, this boar was like a mammoth. He could probably breathe, and the man would fly away a decent distance. His size was still that problem as well. But compared to what he was mutating now, the situation was gaining serious momentum. The watcher saw what was happening. Now it wasn't just an iron-armored boar, but a snake-tailed iron-armored boar. The watcher reassured the student, but it was obvious that he was even more trembling with fear than Feng Yun. He saw the teacher shaking and waiting for someone to come to the rescue. But the boy was scared himself. It looked like Feng Yun wouldn't be able to hide his strength. There was no time to wait for people to come here to deal with this boar. He would have to act on his own to the best of his ability. But fortunately, Zhou Kunlun also faced this situation. The grown snakeheads become the new weak point of the iron-haired boar. With enough patience, dealing with it can be even easier than before its mutation. With the knowledge of the examiner and this mutation, Feng Yun was noisily able to defeat the boar quite quickly. The watching teacher couldn't believe what was happening. He was 100% sure that the boy would lose, and now all his expectations had evaporated. From his height, he continued to stare at the student with an amazed look, and Feng Yun only modestly denied it, saying, People are capable of many things when they are cornered. But he had nothing to answer, for the teacher still hadn't come to his senses. Who knows? Maybe he was afraid of this student now. Feng Yun had of course passed the exam, but the problem was different. Would the examiners believe it? There was nothing he could do, so he could only leave it to fate. But how does a teacher evaluate a student who single-handedly defeated a second-ranked mutated monster? The teacher seemed to come to his senses, remembering that the guy had left in gear and with a weapon. And the second he got out there to take it all, Boy spotted the guy and assumed he'd escaped without a fight. But he didn't care much because soon it would be his team's turn. He wouldn't be afraid of any monsters. Only Yang Tian from Group 7 and Mao Yunshui and from Group 3 can compete with the named leader for the top spot. After changing his clothes, Feng Yun ran out of the locker room satisfied. He could now exhale and even lie down in a corner. The guy immediately found a good spot in the sun. It was a bench that other students also passed by preoccupied with their own business. The results will be announced in the afternoon, but before that, Feng Yun wanted to challenge Zhou Kunlun and Black Golden Eagle a few more times. Jin thought that her ward had become a bit arrogant after defeating a mutated rank 2 monster. After lunch, a lot of students could be seen some of them were unconscious, and doctors were now pumping them out. The very same leader saw that the results had already been posted. Those students who remained conscious were eagerly looking at the results and searching for their name on a piece of paper. The best in the 8th group was Bai Yuntian. The best in the 3rd group is Mao Yunshui. In the 7th group, Yang Tian was the best. The examiner scrutinized the list. He was surprised that Feng Yun, an orphan with no origin, had defeated a rank 2 monster. Zhu realized that he was keeping some secrets and immediately determined to take the boy into the army, except that he was immediately interrupted. Feng Yun was also the headmaster's favorite student. Today was a beautiful day. Even though Feng Yun had only fought a few times in the mirror space, he was happy that he had successfully passed the exam. Zhou Kunlun's inch-walking technique and the black golden eagle feathers had fallen to him. And right now, the results of the exam should be announced. When the young man ran up to the board where the results are announced, who saw a crowd of many students who were clamoring for some reason. A lot of them were unhappy about something. There were even rumors that someone was cheating. It was shameless, and many wished to talk to the principal about it. Feng Yun had just come in and was trying to figure out what had happened. But when he saw the results of the board, he realized that all the fuss was about him, and he was the one who had cheated, apparently. The top four students immediately headed to the principal's office. Toth met them with his usual look. They didn't wait long and immediately started accusing Feng Yun of cheating. After all, he had gotten the highest grade. 
The highest grade was C, but he was given a CCC. The guys felt that this was unfair. The teacher who was sitting quietly immediately jumped up. Because what right did they have to decide what was fair and what was not? But the principal understood the students and decided to show them something. A circle of different magical symbols formed on the table. This circle projected Feng Yun's fight against the snake-tailed iron-armored boar. It seemed like this should have calmed the guys down, but they began to argue even more. There was no such monster among the first-ranked monsters, and they noticed it. Feng Yun had killed this boar in less than five minutes, and after all, it had mutated to rank two right before the assessment. After realizing why such a grade, the students immediately apologized for the disturbance and hurriedly left. Starlight Base, the black market of the outer city. Feng Yun walked around this neighborhood alone. He wasn't going to skip class and come here to sell his stuff. It was just that everyone at school looked at him so strangely that he couldn't keep a low profile. Feng Yun found the store and entered it with the hope that it was honest. He was met at the store by a nice girl who immediately offered her help. It was rumored to be the largest chamber on the black market, and now the young man wanted to sell his belongings here. He showed off the items he had recently won, which were black golden eagle feathers. The counselor understood what was in front of her. There were quite a few feathers, and they were all different colors. Black golden eagle feathers are very good material for feather arrows, which fit better than ordinary metal. There were 40 feathers, one feather the consultant was willing to value at 10,000 yuan. If all the feathers are in good condition, Feng Yun will get a total of 400,000 yuan, to which he agreed. If the transaction was ready to take place, Feng Yun must provide identification. The counselor had a similar circle with hieroglyphics on her desk as the principal. She placed Feng Yun's ID card in the middle of this circle. The document had been checked, and now she was handing it back, thanking her for using the services of this store. Feng Yun touched his ID card and that glowed showing the table. His details were written there, as well as his financial status, which now consisted of 404,000 wain. He had never had such a sum in his life. He was happy that now he didn't have to worry about money. Feng Yun left the store and decided to later transfer 200,000 wen to the orphanage, anonymously of course. In this way, he could make the lives of the little ones much better. The next day, the young man still came to the academy. Otherwise, he would not be able to explain himself to the principal and sister Xiaolan. Feng Yun was calmly heading in his direction as he was disturbed by his teacher. Feng Yun began to explain why he was absent, saying that he was too scared yesterday during the evaluation, and it seemed that because his immune system was low, he had fallen ill. And now he asked to take a vacation for six months. The teacher, of course, didn't believe him and took him to the principal. The young man was already planning how he would act if he was kicked out, Plans were beginning to include a way to escape the city and start a life of hunting and killing monsters. The director allowed them in. The first question he asked was what level the young man was at. There was no point in lying, so he honestly admitted that he was an ordinary mid-rank martial artist. Such a statement took the teacher by surprise and he literally started cursing. He didn't understand how the young man had trained so hard to reach such a level. Just a short while ago, he had only studied the beginning exercises and now he was a mid-level master. But the academy valued each of its outstanding students and did not wish to interfere in the personal lives of students. The principal immediately offered Feng Yun a drink of tea, but the guy was very afraid as he didn't know if the tea was poisonous. School is relatively simple, but society is much more complex. No matter how big the teacher's wings are, they won't be able to cover the entire outside. Therefore, the principal warned Feng Yun to be as quiet as possible outside the school. Such a statement didn't lightly surprise Feng Yun. He didn't know how to react and remained silent. In any case, Feng Yun received his well-deserved first-place reward, which was the blood key pills. As well as a week's vacation, then the young man would be enrolled in the senior class. Feng Yun didn't attend class for a week, but that didn't mean he gave up training. Every day he persevered to improve his physical condition. He had gone from a mid-level martial artist to a top-level martial artist. He had spent most of his time grind inside the system for the past three months and had finally reached a regular top rank martial artist. Not only could you feel it, but you could also see his muscles all over his body were pumped up. Not a trace of the puny boy was left. The primordial koi of the gold attribute between heaven and earth strengthened Feng Yun's body. But shouldn't the benefits of attributes only appear after reaching the level of a true martial artist? It seemed that they would begin to appear at the level of an ordinary top ranked martial artist. Warriors with attributes autonomously absorb energy corresponding to their own attributes to refine their bodies. 
This works much more effectively than blood chai pills or the blood and flesh of monsters. Feng Yun was not enough. He had obtained the original key from one attribute and wanted to get more attribute talents. If he obtained all ten attributes, he would probably become the only genius in the world. Feng Yun was at the Starlight base. In three months, he had managed to acquire the second-ranked martial arts skills of Limit Breaking Fist and Palm of Inhuman Strength. The second-ranked body-hardening martial art Golden Bell Hardness and the first-ranked skill Sharp Golden Strike. It was worth noting that the attribute skill Sharp Golden Strike could only be practiced at the level of a true martial artist. Everything else Feng Yun had learned from the system and achieved perfection. He also obtained an alloy battle sword and alloy battle armor. It's time to hunt for monsters outside the base. Perhaps Feng Yun will encounter powerful monsters that he can project. It could be seen the young man had already stepped beyond the thresholds of the walls of the Starlight base. From the outside, it looked like he was 14 or 15 years old. The soldiers didn't understand if he was that ignorant or just fearless. They felt sorry for the man who would go to pick up his corpse. Apparently it was so dangerous outside the city that his going out meant death. The night snow forest outside the Starlight base was home to all kinds of monsters, and the danger here was endless. Therefore, it was no wonder that the military reacted like this. At the same time, there are also various resources here that attract attention. That is why this place is so popular among hunters. Most people would buy expensive maps before arriving here to understand the distribution of the monsters. But Feng Yun didn't need that, because he had the experience of Zhou Kunlun, who had been here countless times. The first monster that came across was the Azure Flower Serpent Primal Rank Monster. The power of its venom is so strong that a single bite can disable any warrior below the level of an ordinary top-ranked martial artist. But it contains nothing of value and there is no point in projecting it. There were huge trees in the forest, and at times, this could only gather to his advantage. Feng Yun easily moved on the branches, jumping from one to another. And so when he came down from a huge tree, who met a rhinoceros lying down. It was very big and already dead. Feng Yun cut off a piece of meat from its flesh and then continued onward. He preferred the ground of the trees. They were safer to travel on. And at the same moment, he noticed something. Something flew towards the branch where he was at a great speed. But the young man reacted in time and jumped back. He was already descending towards the ground and along with him the arrow too. This attack predicted his next move. He couldn't dodge. The solution to this problem was two. He had to either repel the blow or accept it. So he began to apply the second rank body hardening technique. Wherever he went, the arrow would follow him. So he used the hardness of the golden dome. The attacking archer certainly didn't expect such a thing. He froze with a look of surprise on his face. It seemed like he had never seen a person who had mastered the hardness of the golden dome perfectly. Feng Yun had no intention of leaving his assailant alone and immediately attacked him from behind. The young man caught the archer by surprise, and he didn't even know what to do, and just looked down as if he was about to fall. From Zhou Kunlun's experience in the snowy forest at night, Feng Yun realized that in addition to how to watch out for monsters, it was also necessary to watch out for hunters that lurked in the shadows and could attack at any moment. It wasn't a hunter, it was some beggar scum. He had nothing but three bottles of blood psi pills. Even his gear was all tattered, no wonder he wanted to rob our hero. Some huge gunshot sounded. The young man's trail immediately disappeared, and behind the trees that were nearby, other hunters were hiding. They had probably been here from the beginning and had seen everything that had happened. The man on the left looked slim, and the one on the right looked like a sumo fighter. But admittedly, they were in uniform. They couldn't believe what had just happened. A boy of 14 years old had defeated an adult male hunter. The archer's name was Liu Guan. He was at the level of an ordinary top-ranked martial artist. This was a skilled archer and had killed several hunters before. But now, he was unable to counter anything. The hunters noticed that the boy was fluent in the first-ranked martial art of sword chopping, the second-ranked martial art of inch walking, and the second-ranked body-hardening technique of golden bell hardness. But could one perfectly master the second-ranked body-hardening technique at the age of 14? One could assume that he had been practicing since he was four years old, but that was a delusional assumption. At that age, his bones were not even formed, so how could he begin to perfect his body? In any case, the hunters were wary of this boy. The soldiers had already watched the young man return to the walls of his home neighborhood, 
He had a huge sack over his shoulders to say that the soldiers were surprised that the young man returned home. Nothing to say. Feng Yun had returned to the Starlight Base by evening and was already in the black market of the outer city. He spent most of the day in the dark, snowy forest hunting for monsters, but the backpack was too small to bring all the loot back, so he had to take only valuable materials like flesh and blood with him. The young man was distraught because he had lost a lot of things. In the forest where man was in danger, he had managed to gather many valuable materials, but he had only taken what he needed. Feng Yun once again went to that shop where he sold feathers. As a result, all that pile of stuff was sold for 300,000 yuan, which was even less than the value of the black golden eagle feathers. Still, it was a good amount of money, because he had earned it in half a day. It had been a difficult day, and finally the young man returned to the orphanage. He was sorry that he didn't face the monster who possessed the attribute talent, but he considered it normal. The main thing is not to hurry and everything will always work out. A smell of meat developed from the kitchen, which enveloped the entire hallway, and Feng Yun sensed it. Xiao heard someone coming and immediately rushed into the hallway when she saw her brother. The girl immediately took his hand and dragged him along as if it couldn't wait. On the way, the girl explained that someone had donated 200,000 wen to the orphanage, and the director had decided to give everyone a delicious treat. At a time like this, a good meal is like a holiday, and even more so for a man from around here. Feng Yun felt that he needed to work harder to become a true martial artist and pass the entrance exams for the Inner City Starlight Academy, and then to buy a house in the center of the city for the director and children, and then he could guarantee their safety. Two days have passed, and today Feng Yun has to transfer to the top course. Now he doesn't have to try to be inconspicuous and wear a mask like he did before. A trainer standing in front of a crowd of students was saying motivational things. Like, if you don't become a real martial artist by the age of 30, you can go to all four corners of the world. But in any case, it was not worth relaxing even if there were still 15 years left before 30. The teacher finished his speech from the crowd shouted out Feng Yun. This was the last time he wanted to take a vacation. Maybe he would be lucky this time. The students standing nearby began to whisper. Everyone remembered Feng Yun as the person who took the CCC rank in the exam. But his request was considered arrogant since he had asked for it on the first day. The principal had warned the teacher to be careful in teaching this boy. But the teacher did not expect him to ask for a vacation on his first day. So first he asked him how many days he wanted to leave. Asking for six months vacation would be too brazen, so he only asked for two or a month. Naturally, such a request made the teacher angry and caused the students to resent him. If Feng Yun didn't have an important reason to take a vacation, the teacher would have to punish him. But telling the reason made him very uncomfortable. The teacher was angry because a month's vacation was already a lot. What was the young man going to do during that time? He should tell his class teacher about it. I wanted to tell the reason to the guy. So he suggested that it should be resolved by sparring. If the leader defeated Feng Yun, he would stay. But if not, he would give him a vacation. The class teacher was angry, but now he was literally seething with rage. He hadn't expected such insolence from a student. To think that the boy wanted to fight him and expected to win. The teacher's level of refinement was better and taller than Feng Yun. But in terms of martial arts and practical experience, he was clearly inferior to the student, which was why the boy deliberately provoked the teacher. Feng Yun already knew a lot of things. There was nothing for him to learn at the academy, so he would just waste his time here. The teacher could not refuse his student such a request, and now they stood opposite each other. The class teacher believed that if he couldn't change his way of thinking now, he wouldn't be able to grow in the future. For his own good, he thought of beating Feng Yun up a little. The young man began to attack first and used an inch walk to start. And then he'll use his finger instead of his sword. Specifically the sword cutting technique. The teacher was still standing there and the student was getting closer and closer. Would the teacher do anything at all? But you gotta hand it to him. He didn't live his years doing nothing. And still he fought back. The teacher's hand was literally blazing with purple fire saying that he was no longer as relaxed as he had been at the beginning of the battle. He had underestimated his opponent and was only now starting to use his power to its fullest. But it didn't seem to be helping much. The teacher noticed that Feng Yun had perfectly mastered the inch walk. How was that even possible? The teacher didn't calculate the force and seemed to put too much force into his punch. It even scared him a bit. He wouldn't be able to change the strength of his strike on the fly. Feng Yun wouldn't have time to root away from him and had to defend himself with the dome technique. After the strike had traveled through the dome shell, Feng Yun unleashed his string of strong blows that literally knocked the teacher off his feet. Feng Yun was in the midst of a battle. 
he was emitting a destructive energy that protected him. The next moment he made a long jump. One such jump was enough to reach the teacher. The teacher saw that his student was using a limit-breaking fist. Feng Yun flew at his teacher with all speed, wanting to achieve his victory after all. And he in turn did not know where to go, and literally screamed with fear. It's about time the teacher might fall again from a student's blow. But Feng Yun didn't aim his punch at him and took his fist aside. He only said modestly that his teacher had allowed him to win. After such a battle, the teacher stood shocked and with his student's gaze. Feng Yun wanted to leave the academy sooner than later, so he asked him to keep the promise his teacher had made to him. There was no reason for Feng Yun to refuse, because he had actually defeated him without any tricks. The trainer carefully observed the student's movements and his understanding of the martial art. This was not typical of a 15-year-old student. The teacher was still standing still and didn't even have time to say a word, all the while looking at his mentee in a bewildered manner. Before the teacher could say anything, Feng Yun hurriedly said goodbye and ran away. Now his classmates looked at him with a kind of respect and surprise. They even considered him arrogant. If he came back now, he would definitely be scolded. Therefore, the best idea was to go to the dark, snowy forest. Feng Yun could hunt the rank three monsters that were hanging around alone there. By doing so, he could earn a good amount of money. There was not a second to lose and so Feng Yun decided to take the bus that was already stopping near his stop. On the way, he decided to enter the mirror space and started a battle with Zhou Kunlun. Next in line was a black golden eagle. Maybe something will fall out and time can be spent in a good way. Feng Yun was indeed very lucky. He had just obtained a low rank wind attribute talent. It was nothing short of lucky because he just went in to beat up some monsters and got something. Green was the only energy color with the attribute of wind. And now Feng Yun had it. Together with the golden attribute Qi energy, he could become stronger even without cultivation. The realization was very satisfying. Now the young man was just going to have to get five to six attribute talents or else. He would obtain them all. After that, he would be able to kill high-ranked monsters. Jin, meanwhile, was thinking of reminding Feng Yun that monsters with attribute talents were very strong. There were chances that he would die before he could even get close to them. Meanwhile, Feng Yun's homeroom teacher came to the principal's office. He explained the situation that had happened the day before, and now asked if he could let the student go on vacation. The teacher was very nervous, and this did not escape the principal's keen eye. He offered him a drink of tea and a seat. In the history of this academy, there have been many teachers who have been defeated by students. The class teacher should be happy that this happened to him, explained the principal. The teacher didn't understand and got even more nervous because he thought it was humiliating. To think that a 15-year-old student beat a teacher with a lot of experience? The principal noticed that Feng Yun's skin had a golden color, which meant that his body hardening technique was of the second rank. And this wasn't just the initial stage. If Feng Yun's class teacher had been disappointed and depressed before, now he felt angry. The man didn't know how this was possible with the boy, and he was sure that he was definitely hiding something. But the principal was thinking from a completely different perspective. He realized that having such a brilliant student in his class was a good thing. Once Feng Yun became famous, it meant that the teacher would also become famous. But if you think about it that way, the class teacher didn't even train him. Feng Yun came to him already like this. Prepared and strong, the teacher realized that he hadn't put a fraction of the knowledge and help to promote Feng Yun to his current rank. But the headmaster insisted. If someone found out who Feng Yun's teacher was, they would not only be interested in Feng Yun, but also in the teacher himself. And no one would care who had taught him before. The mood in the room was heating up as the teacher continued to argue stubbornly with the principal. The older man explained to him such trivial things and that he should be proud to have such a talented student. But it's all a load of rubbish. And the principal suggested the following. If a teacher has nothing to teach a student, he should let the student be homeschooled. Also, the academy should make it clear that studying there is not useless. The teacher knew his student's address, and the principal asked him to send him a small box. The class teacher wanted to ask some more question as if he wanted to make sure that the box was really what he thought it was. But the principal got tired of the questions. The poor man's heart began to ache, so he asked him to hurry up with his request and take the gift to Feng Yun soon before he changed his mind. There was indeed something valuable in the box since the teacher was holding it so carefully and carefully. He swore to the principal with his life that he would deliver this item to Feng Yun. As the years passed, the principal could not believe that there was hope to see the academy nurture geniuses. The headmaster was quite old, and had obviously put a lot of effort into this academy. He would be glad to die with no regrets in his heart. In two months' time, there would be the four schools exam. 
The principal had high hopes for Feng Yun. The boy must shine and show his full strength to these three old men of other academies. It was then that our principal would exhale with a free chest. This is the area outside of the night snow forest. It was covered in fog, thick trees, and the occasional tenacious swamp. Feng Yun wandered here like a local. He immediately came across a monster of the third rank fire ant army. It could be said that throughout this day, his luck had not left him. The ant shells and fire poison are very valuable, so they will bring a lot of money. The young man waited for the right moment, and as soon as he saw it, he immediately attacked the ant with his sword. Jin saw that these ants were indeed very numerous and panicked, warning her ward not to attack. But it was already very late. Feng Yun only managed to promise that he would be careful with the fire poison. About the fire poison, Jin didn't worry about it, only asked as Feng Yun looked around. One ant was indeed defeated, and red poison was oozing from it. But how would he cope with the other four ants that were already heading towards him? On the other side, another huge mob of midges could be seen about to attack as well. Our hero didn't back up and started dealing with them right away. Feng Yun stands confidently with his sword, his gaze focused. The ants are approaching, and he deftly swings his sword, shredding the air. The virtuoso blows deal with the not small and cunning opponents, creating the characteristic sound of metal clashing with chitin. The ants were able to disguise themselves by changing their color, but no one said anything about it. Feng Yun had to learn this during the battle, but there was nothing he could do about it. An army of giant ants like ghosts of darkness are sneaking around the dense forest on Feng Yun. Their armored bodies glide smoothly through the thickets and leave an invisible trail of menace at every step. The wind carries the whisper of their moving feet, creating a stirring symphony of the chaos to come. The ants' eyes flicker with greed, and their silhouettes disappear into the darkness like ominous shadows waiting for their moment. Feng Yun has no choice but to run for his life. An unexpected guest appeared in front of the crowd of ants. It was a reptile that also found a tidbit in Feng Yun. Now, not only was the crowd of ants chasing the young man, but also a huge monster. Luckily, the young man knew how to turn this situation around. He simply cut off the monster's head, hoping it would keep the insects at bay. Feng Yun successfully got out of the ill-fated forest. There were no more cases, and he returned to the orphanage. But not through the front door, but through the window. He walked around the house like a thief, and he climbed in like a thief. He ended up running away from an army of angry red ants for half a day. If it wasn't for the carcasses of those monsters that had delayed them, Feng Yun might have really died. The catch was not very successful, although he kept the most important thing, his life, without losing anything. He only managed to sell 20,000 yuan worth of things. If he wants to buy a house downtown, he'll need at least a hundred million, the boy pondered. Someone's hand began to reach out from the door, and then two strong hands grabbed the boy by the scruff of the neck, but he didn't even cry out. An irate coach came to visit as promised. The teacher's sudden visit had put the orphanage director on edge, thinking that Feng Yun had done something wrong. But she started to defend him and gave the back of her head to the coach. Then she awkwardly apologized for hitting the wrong person in the back of the head. The coach had a huge bump on his head, but he didn't seem to notice it. He also said that Feng Yun was a good student. Feng Yun is the best student in the history of his teaching, so the academy decided to let him train on his own for two months. And also the academy was giving the student a gift, which was the reason the teacher came to him. Maybe that's what will help him become even stronger. The teacher opened the box, and Feng Yun was pleasantly amazed by such a gift. Was there really something valuable in there? In the middle of the box were three pills that emitted a golden color. These pills were very expensive, worth at least a few million. They were third-rank pills, they couldn't even be bought from the outside of the city. The principal was still standing beside Feng Yun, and Xiao Lan came over as well. When the woman heard the price of the pills, she almost fainted, and Xiao had to hold her back. The principal knew that Feng Yun could be naughty sometimes, so she was happy to entrust his training to such a trainer. But in fact, the teacher was honored in the first place, and he didn't hide it. Feng Yun guessed that these pills were given to him by the academy principal himself. It was a very generous gift from him, but one should trust by verifying, so he wanted to verify the authenticity of these pills. Jin watched everything that was happening and only giggled. She was as clear as day, but Feng Yun was still in doubt. These pills were filled with a huge amount of qi. The young man should have first prepared himself to absorb their energy. He decided to embark on it right now, so that no one would distract him. Feng Yun hung a sign on the door warning him of what he was cultivating. 
The guy sat down in lotus pose, concentrated fully, and started taking the pill. Without thinking, he took a sip of it. Soon, something began to glow in the lowest part of his body. This light was yellow like the pill itself. It enveloped Feng Yun's entire body. Naturally, it hurt like hell, but it was a pain that could be endured, and it was a pleasure to endure. His eyes seemed to be flashing with lightning. He couldn't hold back his screams, so he screamed with all his might. His body felt like it was going to be fried in no time. He could see the muscles in his skin, and his body seemed to be getting stronger. The level of this pill is too high. Feng Yun's body might not be able to withstand it, and he would end up dying. He should rather use the turtle snake body tempering technique to absorb the pill's energy. Feng Yun had never heard of objects that could kill a person just like that. He didn't want to die, so he immediately used Jin's advice. He was strong and quiet as a turtle, and it helped him a lot. Now the young man wasn't screaming in pain. He was peaceful. If in the first stages he could not make an extra movement, now he moved fully and vigorously. His movements were like a snake bite. The hardening did make him feel normal. It was like a solar plexus in my stomach. The golden slurry that came from the pill flowing through my veins. He started keeping score and doing simple exercises. His pain was replaced by strength. Now he could stand on his hands as well as his feet. Sweat dripped down his body and face from hard training and transformation. The training lasted for a whole night, and it was already a new day. The cultivation was still going on. You could tell from his appearance that he was about to fall. But Feng Yun was still standing firmly on his feet. Feng Yun became stronger. Cultivation completed successfully. Perhaps his body was now as strong as steel. He had increased his speed and defense a lot. Now he had to forge blood, and then he would become a martial artist. Who would have thought that the pill would have such an effect? Most get stuck at this stage and usually take two or three years to get there. To do this, it is not only necessary to maintain blood key. It is important to constantly think about the quality of key. Either way, one can obtain a lot of high rank treasures. But martial artists use the energy of heaven and earth to extract pure blood qi. Feng Yun wanted to obtain the attribute talent as soon as possible. But right now, he had forgotten about something important. He needs to eat. The boy literally pounced on the food. Xiaolan thought that cultivation made him have to eat so much. But fortunately, the orphanage now had money. As soon as he finished his meal, he immediately went into the dark, snowy forest. He gave Xiaolan a mental promise that he would soon become even stronger, and then their home would be much better. As a result, they won't have to worry about the little things. They will be able to live a full life and not deny themselves any food. Another week passed. It wasn't easy for Feng Yun to find a monster with attribute talent. The guy came across a sign informing him that the interior of the forest was coming next. The rescue team would not be able to get here, and the rescue signal would be ignored. So if people go further, the barrel will deal with the consequences themselves. It also means good items will fall out next. Feng Yun sat on the shore, wondering if he would deliver or not. The distance didn't seem to be very far. If he got closer, who could provoke a ferocious beast of rank 4 or higher? But then there was a chance of dying after the first strike. The guy swung and threw a rock into the water. The spot where the rock hit started to darken. It grew darker and darker with each passing moment, and soon someone's evil eyes appeared. The dark waters suddenly shook, forming a vortex in the center of the lake. A giant monster with a frightening maw rises from the depths, jets of water lazily gushing out of it. Its red eyes glow ominously, casting shadowy reflections on the surrounding water, creating an atmosphere of newly awakened evil. The boy was out of his mind at the sight of such a monster. There was no fear in his eyes, only wonder and admiration at the greatness of such a monster. But he didn't admire it for long, and immediately moved away to a safer distance and then he heard someone swing his sword. The force of his blows fills the air with the sound of metal and the howl of struggle. Suddenly, there is a sharp movement, and the sword pierces the monster's giant neck with force. The head slowly pulls away from the torso, which is about to fall into the water. Only the head fell right under Feng Yun's feet. In front of him was a rank three monster, a blue scaled fish. Without turning around, Feng Yun heard someone heading straight towards him. It was a hunter just like him. The man looked tired, and in his right hand he was literally dragging a sword the size of half his body. His body was in armor, and it wasn't cheap. Jin could see information about him, and also assumed that he was a mid-ranked martial artist. The man's name is Zhong Yun Miao, and he is 30 years old. His drop was pretty good. A lot of martial techniques went there, as well as some good equipment, weapons, and pills. Zhong Yun seemed to have not come with evil in mind. 
Without any prejudice, he warned Feng Yun not to wander off on his own because it was dangerous here. But he took his own and warned the young man not to follow him, as he would not share the meat of the fish. However, he didn't really need the fish. What was more interesting were the items that Jun Yun had. Luckily, Feng Yun was able to copy everything into the mirror. A middle-ranked martial artist really did have a lot of things. Now for a while, Feng Yun might not risk going into the dark, snowy forest. Feng Yun also managed to project a scaly fish. It is a ferocious beast of the third rank. In its drop, one could find scales, meat, and the attribute talent of water. The decision was made to return home and immediately start knocking everything out. Toward evening, Feng Yun returned to safety. As soon as he entered the room, he immediately started fighting with the scaly fish. After the first enemy was defeated, Feng Yun proceeded to another one, Zhong Yun. Feng Yun had two victories and had obtained the water attribute talent and the star sword technique. The star sword technique was incredible. Zhong Yun was constantly cultivating it, training it to be better and better each time. And now this technique also belonged to Feng Yun. He didn't need to put in a lot of time or special effort to master this technique. It was all about cultivation. And now, Feng Yun was also wielding a sword in the star technique just like Zhong Yun. This technique was much stronger than his, and even without fighting, it was perfectly felt. Feng Yun was angry at Jin. After all, she had not warned him that the mirror space could create weapons. The young man had to use a real weapon when he was learning sword techniques. And note that it also cost several thousand. It was a lot of money for him before. Once the star sword technique was mastered, the guy proceeded to attribute water talent. It was different from the sharpness of gold and the ferocity of wind. The chi of water resembling a gentle touch that seemed to heal his wounds. So the chai of the water attribute has a healing effect. Now the guy wouldn't have to worry about the wounds he might get in the future. Feng Yun currently possessed three attribute talents. His body was constantly tempering into three kinds of chi at once. Even if he did nothing, he could still become a martial arts master in three months. Such a period of time he thought was very long, and decided that he should grab the chance and cultivate even more. Feng Yun was leaving the orphanage, and right before he left, something caught his attention. There was a crowd of men in front of his house who had definitely come to see him. Many of them had a bored look on their faces. It seemed their leader was beginning to glare angrily at the boy. Feng Yun's gaze was not the kindest, as if he was already preparing to repel the attack. The guy's eyes shone with flames, filling with aggressive determination. In them, one could see the restless fire of readiness for battle. Sparks of determination that flickered, emphasizing his determination to become a part of the battle. The gaze is full of energy and ambition, ready to burst into flames at any moment. If the strange men had a bored and uninterested look before, now their faces spoke of pure fright. They saw Feng Yun's gaze, and could read in it, that it was as if he had killed a lot of people in the past. The gang leader saw an ordinary boy as a literal beast. He was taller than him by a few centimeters, but Feng Yun stood on his feet much more confidently and inspired great fear. He was considered more fearsome than any ferocious beast one could see. The men were so overcome by fear that they fell off their feet. When they saw their opponent, they realized that they couldn't fight him and even thought that Feng Yun could easily take them down, which in fact was the case. Feng Yun approached them closer and closer. They were just ordinary bandits or trying to introduce themselves like that. The men were very weak, but they were trying to be at least a little brave. The young man was not going to retreat and immediately approached the gang leader. Then, he ostentatiously tore off a button from his shirt. Feng Yun made it clear that now he was asking questions here and they would give answers. But if they don't agree, their plight will not be envied. There was no choice. They had to answer any questions he asked right now. The first question was pretty obvious. Where did the bandits come from and what did they come here for? The bandits introduced themselves as the Black Axe Group. They came here to find Feng Yu Xu, but they didn't expect to stumble upon Feng Yun, replied the leader in fear. Liu Yun's group that belonged to Feng Shu was destroyed by them, and only Feng Shu managed to escape. Their boss suspects that he took all the property of that group, that's why they are here. Hearing the reason for these bandits' visit, Feng Yun did not hesitate to perform a hand punch right in the neck. He made it clear that he didn't care about their business, and he warned that if they got this house involved in anything, he'd have to go to their nest. The bandit literally stood on his own four at Feng Yun's side, who placed his foot on his head. With his whole appearance, the boy made it clear that it was best not to mess with him, and the bandits understood that. They were trembling with fear and now threatened their chief. 
The man began to openly threaten to apologize to their chief, and maybe then he would pardon Feng Yun. But the young man did not even want to listen to him and pressed his foot harder so that he literally kissed the asphalt. A voice, a familiar voice, was heard from behind. Feng Yushu ran towards his brother and shouted his name. He had come running to warn about this faction. He was very worried about the orphanage and Feng Yun. If the young man was able to defeat a few six, then the head of the Black Axes was much stronger. They should have gathered all the children and urgently get out of here so that there would be no trouble. But it was too late, for the ringleader was here. An iron arrow flew at Feng Yun with speed which was about to hit him and he wouldn't even notice. But the hours of cultivation and many attributes were not given to him for nothing. Feng Yun had no trouble seeing the threat from behind, and he caught that arrow on the fly. A new gang was coming out of the neighboring building. The leader turned to Feng Yu Xu, noting this fact that it was difficult for them to catch him. If they didn't know its origins, they would never have found it here. Yu Xiu warned his brother to take care of himself. This man is Duo Xiao, and by all appearances he was quite dangerous. He is also the right hand of the leader of the Black Axes. It was this man who defeated Xu's gang with his men. The man looked rather menacing and intimidating. He was wearing a pirate's eye patch, and he was dressed in all black and quite lightly. Here he was, after Zhu, and he wasn't going to retreat. He'd finally seen where Xu lived, and apparently planned to snag not only the guy, but this house as well. But Xu wasn't going to just leave it like that. He loved this house, for he had grown up in it, and in gratitude for that, he would defend it. It was his fault those bandits were here, though. Duo Xiao wasn't going to listen to the guy he had his own plans for this house and not the best ones for him. The principal of the orphanage immediately heard the commotion and ran outside where the boys were standing. She called out to them to come inside immediately, but they didn't seem to obey. Meanwhile, the Black Axe faction was already intending to kill them all. The bows and arrows had all been prepared. All that was left was to release the bowstring. Xu felt unprecedented shame and guilt in front of everyone he had dragged into this. How was he going to get out of this? From helplessness, he literally began to scream, drops of blood running down his face and his eyes wandering, trying to find a solution. The group that was just about to shoot arrows was already defeated by their arrows. The arrow holes were visible in their necks, and blood was gushing out in rivers, and they didn't stand a chance. Chu watched everything that was happening with excitement and fear. He was the perpetrator of this situation, but now he was like a bystander. Feng Yun was literally rising on the corpses of these unfortunates who were about to destroy him and the orphanage. He was literally catching the arrows that were flying in his direction, but immediately recoiled. There was no one faster and more agile than him. Feng Yun moved around the area with inhuman strength, not giving even a chance to get caught. He found a suitable spot and stopped there. He threw the arrow he was holding with all his might. The arrow flew at an incredible speed, all happening on the move and in rapid fire. The right hand of the faction leader ran as fast as he could, but he couldn't escape his fate. The arrow that Feng Yun had specially put aside for him pierced his abdomen. Duo Xiao was a middle-ranked pre-master with many battle techniques. It was impossible that he could be defeated by an ordinary top-ranked warrior, but Feng Yun had pierced through him like a piece of paper. It was unimaginable, for that boy that Xu remembered was drastically different from Feng Yun. Feng Yun finished dealing with the gang and resolutely told Xu to follow him to the lair of the Black Axe Gang. This street was a mess, with many corpses and blood. Only the principal, Feng Yun and Yun Shu, were left alive. Feng Yun wanted to completely slaughter the entire group, but no one liked this idea. Going to the bandit's lair was dangerous, because there were many top-ranked masters there. Naturally, the principal was against it. But on the other hand, they were a threat to the Orphanike and should be dealt with. Yu still thought that Feng Yun possessed at most a middle-ranked pre-master. But that wasn't the case, and the young man had demonstrated his highest rank. If Feng Yun promised to turn away in one piece, the principal would let him go, and wouldn't stop him. She will also report the incident to the police. Xiao Lan wasn't left out either. As soon as she heard the sounds of carnage, she ran out with a backpack with a sword visible in it. She placed the pouch in Feng Yun's hands with the words, Don't overdo it. The principal looked after the boys. Now she understood everything. The woman guessed that Feng Yun had donated the money to the orphanage anonymously, because he probably earned it by hunting monsters. The woman was pleased with the boy. He had grown up. His actions spoke of the fact that he was not a boy, but a man. The Black Axe Gang sat at the table and had a meal. They praised and thanked their boss, because thanks to him, 
everyone had successfully strengthened their bodies. In addition, with the boss's brilliant plan, they were able to uproot the floating cloud gang. The last thing left was for the right hand to dispose of Feng Shu, and then all their treasures would belong to the Black Axe. And then their gang would become richer and the strongest in the entire outer city of Starlight Base. The leader of the group sat on the main chair, listened to the flattering words in his direction, and greedily ate a piece of meat. There were footsteps, as if the deputy had returned. But at the same moment, a bag flew straight toward the head of the group. Then a sack flew two more bags that literally scattered food all over the table. The first bag showed the head of Duo Xiao, the leader's right hand. His face was stained by the food he had crashed into, as well as the noodles on his head. The other members of the group looked at the deputy leader with fear. They knew how strong he was, and they couldn't imagine who could do this to them. Well, it's important to clarify that the deputy was dead. The realization frightened everyone, but the leader only smiled wryly as if he didn't care. The doors to the faction's living room opened, a dark silhouette walked through. Feng Yun was holding a sword. Only his red eyes were visible in that darkness. The boss was amazed that such a young man dared to attack a Black Axe member. Was he really fed up with his life? The leader of the group met the guest very hospitably, immediately paying attention to him. The man literally jumped out of his seat and flew towards the young man. Feng Yun stood with his head down on his sword and did nothing. Is a top-ranked pre-master really that strong? Even if Feng Yun breaks through to the top rank, he won't have time to strengthen his cultivation. But even if he did, would they be equal in strength? This was a question that Shu could not answer, because he did not know his brother well. Feng Yun even lowered his sword. He was so confident in himself that he even smiled back. An incredible golden glow was happening near him. It was a golden dome, and a perfect golden dome at that. Shu saw it but assumed he was asleep. Feng Yun had already bought all the valuable resources in the outer city on the black market. The boy knew what the head of the black axes, Liu Mu Tian, was like, and was absolutely ready. The kid's small hand and the man's huge fist came together in blows. They had energy of different colors. Liao Mu Tian had violet-colored energy, while Yun had yellow-golden energy. Feng Yun's energy was much stronger. This could be seen because the leader had flown a decent distance away and was about to fall to the floor. Feng Yun, with confidence and without further ado, engaged in a duel with the enemy gang leader. His movements are filled with the characteristic graphics of a tiger. He deftly avoided attacks, giving the impression of impregnable defense. With each blow, he reveals all his strength, rapidly controlling the situation and crushing the enemy with his confidence in his own skills. The gang leader didn't stand a chance even close. Feng Yun didn't even use a weapon to defeat a man twice his own size. It was enough for him to use one of the attribute techniques. The leader of the group, laid on the ground with shattered armor and open wounds, bleeds out in agonizing silence. His face reflects not only physical pain, but loss, sadness, and frustration. Each breath becomes a last act of resistance, and the blood flows slowly, as if time has slowed its run. Feng Yun had defeated the head. No one said anything, everyone silently watched the massacre with their mouths open. Liu Mu Tian had really lost. No one could believe that there would be someone several times stronger than the leader. Feng Yun proudly hovered over the defeated enemy. He was still alive and breathing. The leader had no pride at all and began to beg for mercy. He didn't like the idea of death at all. He wanted to live. Feng Yun didn't even want to listen to this. If he let him live, it would mean that he'd stick him, and who knows when he'd attack or decide to take revenge. The leader was already dead, but his gang was still alive. Therefore, Feng Yun gave them to his brother who was silently watching. The rest of the group didn't expect to be noticed, or even to be approached at all. Rivers seemed about to flow at their feet. Xu himself was beginning to be afraid, only unclear of what, the offer to deal with in bandits or Feng Yun himself. But since no one wanted to fight, they all welcomed the new head. Absolutely everyone was scared shitless by Feng Yun's strength, and Xu was also frightened by the discovery. Everyone in the group greeted Feng Yun as the new leader, and literally fell to the floor to read him. But it was as if the young man wasn't interested, and just turned around in the other direction. In the same instant, his ID began to glow and he pulled it out. It was a notification from the academy. The Hylan Academy office was notifying that the four martial arts academies of the outer Starlight Bay City were announcing the start of the entrance test on the 1st of August. So it was important to arrive on time at the academy after the vacation. The purpose of the entrance exams of the four academies is to recruit the talents of the outer city for the inner city of the base. 
The fastest way to qualify to live and buy a home in the inner city is to take the entrance exam or become a master. It seemed like the principal was giving him three pills to act as a black horse in the upcoming trials. For the past few years, Heilan Academy had only been ranked last. Well, it's time to repay the old man. Jin assumed that he wanted to get into the inner city to meet more strong fighters to copy and fight them until the fastest advance. This was a really smart plan. Xu turned to Feng Yun. He originally wanted to say brother, but stopped halfway through the word and said his name. The guy wanted to take the black axes under his control and asked Feng Yun for permission. The latter didn't mind because he didn't want to mess around with them. But Feng Yun warned Xu to rely only on his own strength and no one else. Xu was impressed by today's event. It was the first time he had seen what power meant. Feng Yun had managed to defeat an entire gang in front of his eyes, single-handedly. There was no doubt that if he wanted to, there would be nothing left of them in the end. The following instructions from Feng Yun also followed. He asked him to go back to the orphanage to take care of the children and further look after the orphanage as well as the faction. Feng Yun would be away for the time being and therefore entrusted all matters to his brother. But that the latter willingly agreed. If Feng Yun got to the inner city, he would temporarily be unable to take care of the orphanage. Therefore, he should take the time to train Feng Yushu. There wasn't much time. He also needs to focus on cultivation. Feng Yun heard that all the participants in the trial are all top-ranked pre-masters. If he wants to defeat them, he needs to get close to the power of the masters. The fight in the mirror space was very heated. It was initially unclear who would win, but in the end, Feng Yun presented his sword to his opponent's heart. Nothing fell out in the drop, but the young man was in no way disappointed, only wanting to repeat the fight again. A new battle began and ended. Feng Yun won again, and there was nothing in the drop again. The second fight was followed by a third, and there was nothing in this drop again. Feng Yun wasn't going to give up and wanted another fight. He continued the fight numerous times, but nothing fell out for him. Each time, he called for a new fight. This outcome was incredibly infuriating, but he nevertheless did not give up on his goal. Feng Yun continued to farm Zhong Yun Miao for two months. He seemed to have realized that with only first-level techniques and attributes, he couldn't achieve the power of a master in two months. He only had to obtain either a skill or a high-ranked practice. After many fights and frustrations, Feng Yun still drank something from the drop. He had obtained a third-level practice, Tyrant Practice, and immediately accepted it. The Tyrant's practice was almost there he had left to absorb it. It was an incredibly painful process. I guess when he'd swallowed the pills the director had given him, it hadn't hurt as much as this. This practice pierced every cell in his body, which gave him a hell of a pain. It felt like thousands of ants were biting him. Feng Yun had reached perfection in third-level practice in an instant. His body resisted. He should have relaxed. If he lost consciousness, he wouldn't feel any pain. But Feng Yun had determined for himself that he would never faint in front of a girl. With every victory and every attribute obtained, Feng Yun's energy changed, becoming stronger and stronger. As soon as enemies encountered him, they would be frightened by the mere sight of Feng Yun, thinking that he was a monster. Feng Yun had been cultivating all night. Right now, his foundation should be stabilizing. After fully mastering the tyrant practice, he would be able to form a shield from the accumulated chi. This shield is capable of withstanding any strike from an alloy weapon. Pretty good defense at the current stage. While Feng Yun was away, Zhu reorganized the Black Axe Gang into the Dawn Society. If the principal found out, she'd probably be furious. The new head was greeted properly by bowing their heads. Feng Yun immediately asked them to call the boss. Meeting Feng Yun was exciting for them because they were afraid of him, but they obeyed his orders without question. Zhu was glad that Feng Yun had finally visited him. He hadn't gone anywhere for a long time, so at least he had found time to visit his brother. The guy wanted to ask for a favor. Zhu was always happy to help Feng Yun. Feng Yun wanted everyone here to shoot alloy arrows at him. He wanted to test the tyrant's practice shield so that he could then be calm during the battle. Such a request made Uya stupefied. The poor guy couldn't even tell if he was joking. Only the six thought that Feng Yun was looking for an excuse to kill everyone. They immediately started asking for mercy, and if they had done something wrong, just to be told about it. The alloy arrows would easily penetrate even a perfect golden dome. What was he thinking? But Feng Yun insisted because he wanted to experience something new. There was nothing to do, so he had to agree. Xu could guess that the boy didn't sleep at all, since he was learning new techniques so quickly. 
The picture was creepy, a lot of shooters and a 14-year-old kid they were aiming at. But if you looked at the core, it was even crazier. Feng Yun himself insisted on it. It's time to release the bowstring. Each arrow flew into Feng Yun's body. Would the tyrant's technique work? Or would something terrible happen? The tyrant's practice was making itself felt. The young man's body lit up with a red flame that protected him completely. The boy is as still as stone, but his body is permeated with invisible energy. Arrows aimed at him collide with an insurmountable field of defense, breaking and bouncing aside like waves against the shore. Within this impenetrable aura, he remains unharmed, like an untouchable guardian. Many arrows fell, then stuck into the floor, or simply flew off Feng Yun's body. The tyrant's power was so impressive that the arrows would literally break. When all the arrows were stuck in the floor, Feng Yun thanked everyone. Now he knew how strong he was, and he wasn't the only one. Shu was impressed that he had never even heard of such a technique, and was seeing it for the first time. Feng Yun had reached an unimaginable stage of cultivation before his eyes. But it wasn't only Shu who was in shock, but also his guys. They didn't even know how old he was, so they asked. When it was revealed that he was 15, the men in the gang considered themselves literally incapable scum. They were several decades older than this boy, but they didn't have that kind of strength, not even close. The day of the four academy exams had arrived. Feng Yun knocked on the door courteously and then opened it. There were also other students in the principal's office who seemed to be just waiting for him. The director was really happy to see him, since he had high hopes for him. Everyone in the office paid attention to him and mentally gave him their marks. To some, he looked arrogant, and some people are like they've heard of him before. Bai was surprised at all that he was taken as one of the participants. Some students were immediately ready to win and didn't even think that anyone else could win. All students are pre-masters of the highest rank, even those three with Bai Tian Chen. Feng Yun could not relax in any way. The exam did not promise to be easy. All participants are assembled at the site, which means they can move out. On the way, no one talked to anyone. Everyone was hostile to each other, for they wanted to win at any cost. He had entered the inner city five months after being reborn in this world. It felt like he had left the newcomer village. The bus took them to the inner city of the Starlight Base. The city greeted them with its huge high-rise buildings and sunny skies. Before they can enter the city, they have to cross a huge wall. The wall of the inner city is much higher than the outer walls. And also the material of these walls was completely different. Everything was constructed from alloy. The buildings could even withstand the attack of rank 2 monsters. Comparing this city, it was safe to say that the outer city was far behind. Almost all the people here are cultivators. It must be the safest place to be. The Starlight Academy, located near the mountains, is a spectacle that blends glass structures and architectural curves to create harmony with the surrounding landscape. Against the backdrop of the majestic mountains, the Academy appears as if it were part of a celestial panorama. Starlight Academy is not easy to get into. Students will have to take part in a trial, and then those who pass will be admitted. The principal was watching Feng Yun, but his speech was interrupted by a bus horn that was beeping loudly. A few more buses pulled up with other people getting off. Hailan Academy arrived before everyone else, and it didn't go unnoticed. The other teachers started to mock the principal. They threw phrases like, it's not going to improve the results because you came, or it's no big deal to be careless but it's a big deal to instill false hope in the hearts of students. Feng Yun watched all of this, and the headmaster seemed to be angry, but he didn't answer anything. At the same second, the young man noticed the monster that was very close. The bird is about to land. Will anyone do anything about it? But luckily, there was nothing to do. It was a griffin with a rider on it. A griffin with a majestic mane, shimmering with golden and cobalt hues, rising into the air with powerful wings. Its intelligent eyes sparkle in combination with feathers resembling fiery flames. Its massive paws, armed with sharp claws, are ready to react instantly. On the griffin's back sits a rider in armor adorned with symbols. Intertwined with the griffin's coverings, the rider and his noble creature form an unshakable alliance in the air. This was the first time Feng Yun had seen a third-rank griffin with a rider. He couldn't hide his surprise and admiration as he looked at them. He also wondered what stage of cultivation the rider was at. The rider and the griffin were wearing similar equipment. Their armor was clearly not made of cheap material, but of gold. The armor was so polished that it literally glistened in the sun. The griffin's size was impressive, its body literally shielding the earth from the sunlight, creating a shadow on the ground. 
The bird landed very deftly, and the rider skillfully jumped off him. The landing was such that it created a lot of dust around it. Li Feng is a master of the highest rank. Master Li was welcomed by all the teachers. This year he was the examiner. Li Feng was known for his honesty. He was moderately strict but fair. It seemed as if there was no better examiner than him. Only the principal was standing aside. He didn't say anything to Li Feng. Feng Yun noticed this and directly asked if he was going to say anything. But the elder believed that in the era of honoring the strongest, the relationship between people was not based on subservience. The young man immediately projected it to find out more information. And when he saw what was written about him, he scratched his head in puzzlement. Li Feng is already 40 years old. His cultivation has reached a top rank master. There are as many as five third level techniques in his droop, as well as low grade precious equipment, a few second grade primordial energy pills, and battle experience. There's no attribute though. Feng Yun wanted Jin to also scan the principal of Hailan Academy. Yes, only with him being a special case. Right now, the guy is unable to defeat his copy. Does the director really have powerful technicians? Jin decided to keep the intrigue going and suggested that he defeat Li Feng first and then he would find out. Li Feng began his speech. He was more serious than ever. This time, the exam was different from previous years. And the examiner will no longer stick to the four academy competition models. This statement shocked the directors, but not our director. After all, no one even knew about it yet. This is where the forest ends and Starlight Academy begins. The test of the students will be to overcome this forest. The old man had heard of something before, but now he realized that that information was true. There are also 40 students waiting in the forest. If defeated, the students can take their place in the academy, so you should be careful because they will make every effort. Bai was outraged by this situation. After all, they were literally determined to clash with the academy's students. There are only three ways to enter the academy. The first is to reach the rank of master before the age of 13. The second is to be born in the inner city. The third is to pass the exam of the four academies. In some cases, the rank of master could be reached in a year. There was no chance of getting into this academy, but there were chances. Students who will stand up to other students are already at the entry level master level. All the more reason for them to try to maintain their position and serve. It's unlikely that anyone will want to give up their place in this academy. Most of the participants wouldn't pass the trials, and some of them might even die. If Feng Yun is surrounded by even two initial rank masters, he has lost. At the same moment, the young man wanted to fight a copy of Li Feng, but to have it be at the strength of an ordinary person. A fraction of the first victory was guaranteed, maybe something useful would fall out. Feng Yun was confident in his idea, but Jin interjected. The guy didn't change his mind and wanted to start right away. Jin complied with the request and Feng Yun was confident that he would get something worthwhile. They fought without any weapons, but there was no need for that. Feng Yun died instantly from a single blow. Feng Yun revived again. The process was unpleasant, but one had to be patient. He didn't understand how being an ordinary person, Li Feng could use techniques. Jin only chuckled in response, but explained that ordinary people with high martial skills did not exist in reality. They, even with the bodies of ordinary people, could use high-ranked techniques. Before that power destroys his body, he will have time to kill. Feng Yun should stay calm and try to dodge and then strike at the right moment. With the new technique, he would be able to pass the exam. Farming and defending at the same time was very risky. But our hero's middle name is Risk. Li Feng used the third-ranked level 3 technique, 13 Lone Peak Blades. With Jin's instruction, things were already going better and Feng Yun didn't die immediately. It was almost impossible to defeat Li Feng, and the guy was only defending himself. This time, the opponent used the third level diamond palm technique, but Feng Yun only needed to hold on until he died from his own strength to defeat him. This time there was a shadow moving technique. It wasn't easy to last because Li Feng was insanely strong. Only 24 hours were allotted for the exam. Would Feng Yun have time to do everything in that time? Meanwhile, deep in the forest, the students were fighting against each other. It wasn't difficult for the students to catch the students. They felt that these entrance exams were clearly not for them. Perhaps the administration just found an excuse to get rid of the students of the outer city. Training them was a waste of resources. Bai had been standing behind the tree the whole time, eavesdropping on the conversation. He covered his mouth with his hand so that he wouldn't accidentally breathe without being noticed by the students. He saw the abilities of these students and also their attitude. Such a show was certainly not impressive. Feng Yun continued to do battle in the mirror space. 
Li Feng had already used the new second-level technique, 80 strokes of wandering fire. Right now, he had a chance. Would he use it? But in reality, there was already an academy student behind Feng Yun who was about to strike him. He had finally defeated the examiner. He couldn't believe it. There had been so many attempts and defeats, but now he had managed to win. The student literally wanted to kill Feng Yun with his sword, even though he was half in the mirror space, but still remained vigilant in reality. Fortunately, the intended offense failed, and everything turned against the student himself. A darkness literally hovered around Feng Yun, enveloping not only him, but also the surroundings. Since someone was called his enemy, he certainly couldn't expect any indulgences. The student literally squatted down and couldn't even move. Feng Yun only needed one punch to immobilize him. The young man in turn was grateful to the student for allowing him to practice the new technique on him. Black sludge was coming out of the student's mouth. He hadn't expected such a turn of events. He didn't understand how the student had brought him to such a state with one blow. But for him, everything was clear. Because Feng Yun now possessed a third-level shadow strike technique that was mastered to perfection. The first opponent in the exam has been defeated to the death. You could say that the exam had begun. Principal Hailan was arguing hard with the teachers of the academy. He saw that they didn't want to accept students from outside the city, so why make such a sacrifice? But they thought it was just an empty accusation. After all, for the academy, honor was paramount. The students of Hailan Academy were getting worse and worse every year, so it was a waste of resources. But a place in the academy had already been prepared for the principal. But the old man had already decided that if none of his boys survived, he would leave the base. Bayou had the misfortune of being hit by one of the academy students. He was lying on the ground with the student's foot resting on his chest. The student wished he could be the bait and shouted for help. But Bai wasn't going to be the bait. The students of the academy were really angry. They were ready to kill just to not give a chance to win to anyone else. Suddenly he smelled bloodlust. The student immediately drew away from the other students and used the second level technique, Heavenly Cloud Steps. This technique gave him the ability to fly to the height he wanted. The guy felt as if someone had quickly approached him. Perhaps it was a second level inch step technique. He couldn't believe that any of those disciples were close to the rank of a master. But if that was the case, then what was he forgetting here? Feng Yun was currently fluent in the tyrant practice. Third level shadow strike and star sword techniques. All of them were the skills of a middle rank master. Elementary rank masters under 20 years old at most can master the second level techniques perfectly. The opponent is only one. Feng Yun must win. Thanks to Feng Yun's inch step, he was able to quickly leap from the branch to the distance he needed. The student had been watching the young man the whole time and made sure he was using the inch pitch after all. However, he had taught this in the academy as well and headed towards Feng Yun. Right on the fly, he used the second level technique, disorderless strikes. Feng Yun was still standing still watching his opponent. In response, he used the first level chopping blow technique. Two students from different academies fought in complete silence using their unique techniques. One of them, stealthy and stealthy like a shadow, approached stealthily while the other, with a stony expression, competently blocked and counterattacked. Their strategies and skills blended in this silent struggle, creating an atmosphere of tension that only the forest could sense. Feng Yun was tense. He could have used any of the third rank techniques as a counterbalance, but he only used one of the weaker ones. And then used an inch step, he moved a decent distance away from his opponent. The one thought it was cowardice after all. He had just decided to run away as it seemed at first. Even with his rank one technique, the student felt like nailing him. The enemy decided to use the second level technique, traceless kick. In fact, this was also Feng Yun's plan to appear weak. Did the student really think that he could defeat Yun with such a noticeable, traceless kick? Feng Yun sensed someone else. He thought that the shadow strike was best suited for a surprise attack, which meant that he was one step ahead. The student thought that Feng Yun was already like a frying pan, and hurriedly shared this with his acquaintance. Chen Qingxiu was about to attack the young man from behind. Now it was clear who was following him. Feng Yun has two opponents to deal with, only how will he do it? With a sword, someone was chopping down trees all around. The two students just watched it and did nothing. Someone had literally made a fuss and now there was a pile of dust all over the clearing. It was his own among the students. His name was Sun Shi. The guy almost killed his fellow students, but it was as if he didn't even notice it. Sun Shi reproached the boys for being no different from the others. In short, these guys left the exam as wimps. Feng Yun immediately turned to the mirror space where he could see Sun Shi's identity and also project it. Sun Shi is a master of the third rank and he is only 19 years old. 
he had second and third level techniques in his drop. This simply angered Jin and Feng Yun. How were the academy disciples supposed to defeat him? A mid-level master. But what was much more important now was that his lightweight technique was much stronger than the inch step. That means there's no escape. But since there's no escape, he won't do it. Feng Yun decided to use the third level Shadow Strike technique. Shadow Strike struck one opponent dead first. And then the other one, blood started gushing out of them. Shun Shi immediately got wind of the fact that Feng Yun was hiding his strength. However, he was even more interested at the time. He felt his perfection over the other students and didn't hide it. And now, he confidently told Feng Yun that the exam was over for him by putting his sword to his neck. There was no way to dodge, so I had to attack. Shun Shi easily repelled this attack as if he was kicking a ball. Feng Yun flew a decent distance away from the opponent and ended up crashing into a tree, which broke from that impact. Shun Shi determined that Feng Yun had used the practice of a tyrant, but not a rank master. This was actually very interesting to him. Jun Shi used his strength as if he was born with it. Every movement was filled with skill and power. He was 100% confident, and therefore it gave others confidence in him. He easily climbed to his height and prepared his hand to strike. This situation amused him greatly. Shun Shi used the third level Earth Claw technique. This energy was literally tearing apart the earth matter. Feng Yun restrained her for all she was worth. She was so powerful that Shun Shi probably didn't use it often, and certainly not on the weak. This was one of the strongest opponents of his reality. If this continued, he was finished. Shun Shi scattered, using his technique, and was about to attack Feng Yun. He kept his sword at the ready. Fortunately, Feng Yun bounced back in time when the weapon started to approach him, and the sword only hit a tree. Feng Yun slipped away from the attack so quickly that Sun Shi didn't immediately notice him, and only stopped when the tree table was falling. The student was chopping trees for firewood on the fly. This whole exam was a game to him. He could let off steam and show everyone his strength and superiority. In order to prevent these stumps from hitting Feng Yun, the latter repelled them with his technique. The stumps started flying at Sun Shi, but Sun Shi easily defeated them. He also had time to comment on how weak Feng Yun was. The student noticed that the young man's blows were getting weaker and weaker. The student noticed that the young man's blows were getting weaker and weaker. Feng Yun stood still, and it was as if he was concentrating all the power on the ground where he stood, and most importantly on himself. And then Jun Shi attacked with a rank 3 diamond fist technique. With each passing moment, the diamond fist came closer and closer, but Feng Yun was already prepared for such an attack. He could kill a young man with just one blow, and he made no secret of it. After all, Feng Yun had a few trump cards up his sleeve, too. With all his strength, he stopped the diamond hand strike. It may have looked stupid to gather all your strength in your hands to block an opponent's blow. Shun Shi continued to comment on his actions. He didn't do it prejudicially, just as a fact, what he saw. But the surprises don't end there. Shun Shi didn't take into account something important. Feng Yun had developed the shadow strike to perfection. And because of this, he could strike at any moment. The opponent was defeated and now lay sprawled on the grass. This fight was not easy for Feng Yun, but he still managed it. The first thing he did was to take the enemy's trophy, his sword, which was stuck in the ground. But someone called out his name. The guys at his academy saw everything, but they couldn't understand how he was able to defeat a mid-rank master. The next trophy was Zun Shi's equipment. In parallel, he replied that it was no longer an exam. It was now every man for himself, either you or you. Feng Yun had already changed into the equipment of his defeated enemy and held his sword firmly in his hands. In the next moment, he turned around to his classmates, and he made it clear that if anyone blocked his way, he would die. The teachers of the academy were sitting on chairs under a wide umbrella. None of the students had returned so far. Well, after all, they had sent out the worst students. Even if something happened, they relied on Shun Shi. From the direction of the forest, a cry for help could be heard. Did one of the students manage to escape? And it looks like he had a hard time. The teachers didn't look very pleased. I would even say angry. A boy came running out of the bushes of the forest, asking the teacher to save him. He had a bandage over his eye, himself completely shattered, his armor and cloak torn. He ran and kept running, still begging for help. The teachers stood in bewilderment. Who could have done this to their student? Was he really surrounded? But it only took one person to inflict such blows. The teachers were furious at the principal of Hylan Academy. After all, his student was breaking the rules, and teacher Li Feng wasn't following any of them. The student literally went through a shock. Instead of the young man, he remembered some monster and said that he had smashed everyone. One of the teachers began to take his words literally, and was already wondering what could be going on there. 
Shadow Strike struck again at the student, who was already scared and beaten. The student fell to the floor and the teachers standing in front of him fussed. They saw that the crowd of disciples was already here. One silhouette stood out, and from that crowd, all the others stood still. Feng Yun led all of his classmates out of this vicious forest, who were still in shock. That meant the exam was over. One of the teachers was outraged. How dare he kill an academy student in front of them? Feng Yun, without a fraction of hesitation, spoke as if he didn't know it was wrong to kill. But he did it deliberately, as revenge for those who tried to kill him. The other teacher was even more angry. How could he be undermining the academy's authority? This boy should be punished immediately. Feng Yun, the three teachers, and the unconscious student lying between them. One of the teachers was already about to massacre Feng Yun, but a griffin began to fly through the sky, the same griffin of Examiner Li. He jumped down first, followed by the academy director. With his menacing voice, he stopped the looming war. The first thing Li did was to approach the academy student. He was alive and still even breathing. Li ordered the student to be taken to the infirmary. The chances of his survival were high. The teachers were happy to see Li, they immediately started complaining about Feng Yun, who had harmed an academy student in front of their eyes. The one didn't pay any attention to him and turned to Feng Yun. Li saw the wounds on the bodies of the students and assumed that the 39 students were injured by him. Feng Yun did not feel any pity for these students and was even proud that he was able to harm them. He was able to stand up for himself and defend himself against them. The principal immediately came to his students' defense, mentioning that teacher Li was the most fair. The principal hoped that he wouldn't punish the student who had taken the exam so seriously. But he didn't even think about it. Not a single exam of the four academies was without injuries. The students of this academy were not greenhouse plants. If they were not prepared to be between life and death, they would lose sooner or later. All survivors will receive free treatment at the infirmary, and teachers are forbidden to avenge their students. One of the teachers who had been itching to fist Feng Yun was unhappy with this decision. But the examiner's decisions could not be changed. The exam was over. All the students who had reached this place had successfully completed the tests and were enrolled in the academy. Feng Yun was unspeakably happy about this. I mean, every student here has their own house and yard, but it's much more expensive than the shelter. Just as Feng Yun wanted to enter his new abode, he received a new message. The young man couldn't believe there were computers in this world. This computer ran on a formatter, which was incredible. Feng Yun had already changed into more comfortable clothes and was sitting at his computer. He didn't know what to call this computer system, so he decided to call it the Energizer. A file popped up on the display that indicated information about Starlight Academy. Starlight Academy differs from other traditional educational institutions in that students are not divided into classes. Students choose their own courses, and each course has its own price. The higher the rank of technique, the higher the price. In the academy, this cost is the points that students get by completing tasks, fighting in the arena, breaking records, and so on. Feng Yun, as we remember, possesses the ability of limitless copying, so there's no point in him paying for skills. The only thing that attracts him here is the pure energy tower. It contains an energy accumulation formation that speeds up cultivation many times over. There are nine levels in the tower, and the higher the floor, the more energy there is, hence the more points needed to visit it. In the exam, he managed to defeat 40 students. By doing so, he had earned 400 points, but that would only be enough for four hours of cultivation on the first floor. The second floor costs 500 points per hour. The third floor costs 1,000 points. The ninth floor would require 30,000 points. It was pure extortion. It would probably be great to build an energy cluster formation yourself. There are four professions in this world. The first is warrior. The second is alchemists with an innate talent for the elements of wood or fire. The third are artifact masters with an innate talent for fire or metal. The fourth are extremely rare formation masters with innate spiritual talent. But besides just copying the formation masters in the academy, Feng Yun also needs to acquire a spiritual talent. But he had more important things to do right now. During the exam, Feng Yun had noticed that he was consuming energy uncontrollably during the protracted battle. And now that his attributes could continuously consume energy from the environment, he needs to reach the rank of master in no time. There was a rumor going around the academy about a beastly outer city disciple who had single-handedly massacred 40 students. Some people argued because they thought the outer city disciples were weak, but some people stood their ground. A very important factor was that Feng Yun had handled Chunxi, Zhenxi, and the rest of the academy disciples were considered scum. After all, even the elementary rank masters here were much stronger than him. 
the disciples could not accept the fact that a disciple from outside the city had defeated 40 disciples of the academy. These gawkers had awakened their excitement. They wanted to teach Feng Yun a lesson in good manners. No one was happy about the new students from outside the city, and now they were trying to get rid of them. Feng Yun was being watched closely because they noticed that he had never left the dormitory for a month of crime. The guy gave himself to training every day. He couldn't let a single hour go by without improving his skills. Feng Yun wanted his status to improve to master and wanted to achieve it as soon as possible. Streams of red energy ran through his body, which he first felt and then could see. He was on a training ground where there was no one else. A majestic energy swirled around his body, which he could feel with every millimeter of his skin. This energy was so powerful that it reached the other students. It was impossible not to feel it. This was the energy of a top-ranked master. Feng Yun had been practicing for half a month and had finally broken through to the master level in his 15 years. The boy immediately went into the mirrored space to look up information about himself. For his age, such talents, attributes, equipment, and practices, not everyone achieved this even by the age of 30. He's already stronger than most of the residents of the Starlight Base. At the very least, he could take out most of them. Jin could clearly feel the ripples of the surrounding energy in the outside world. Feng Yun could cultivate a steel practice that had a bonus to attack power. Steel practice is only first level, so it is not recommended to waste time on it. It was better to choose another attribute practice. Besides, Feng Yun also had a talent for metal, wind, and water, so they could be practiced together. Feng Yun was already impatient to walk around the neighborhood, looking for new targets to scan. Feng Yun was filled with determination. He wished to improve all of his talents. Practices and talents with attributes are on his plate. All he has to do is act. The day after receiving the title of master. Feng Yun actively searched for a suitable person, and he never found anyone. To him, many people were trash. He walked around all day, and except for students with the same attributes as him, he found no one. Even high-level practice, none of them had any. This was causing Feng Yun to feel uneasy. After all, how could he replenish his supplies now? On the other hand, the academy is pretty big, and it's not easy to stumble upon someone suitable. Most likely the real talents should be in the central area where the arena is, or on a mission. The central area of the Starlight Base is the academy's main hall and pure energy tower. In front of Feng Yun stood that very pure energy tower. Its roof was curved, its shape resembling a majestic lotus petal. Rich ornaments adorned every corner of the building, and two small chapels on the sides gave the place a spirit of antiquity and tranquility. The majesty of such a tower was breathtaking, and its energy could be felt even at a great distance. Feng Yun had the idea of sneaking in, but could it be done? The guy stood back and watched the people go in and out of the tower, as if he was thinking through a plan. Many of the students noticed Uyaman. This guy is the seventh strongest in the academy, and it looks like he just came back from a mission. The students watched him with admiration and even sympathy. He had just returned from an assignment and looked like he was about to embark on a new one. Didn't he even need a rest? Feng Yun immediately scanned it in his mirror space. The first thing he noticed was a practitioner with a level 3 metal attribute. Uyaming was only 19 years old. His cultivation had reached a mid-rank master. He had a pretty good drop, which included second and third level techniques, a metal talent, and most importantly, a mid-rank attribute. Of the techniques he had, a second grade seven mile step, a third grade blood blade, a third grade tyrant's fist, and practices with the third grade metal attribute metallic luster. As well as the items, the dark moon blade, and the second grade key pills. Well, Feng Yun's joy was unbounded. He immediately wanted to get down to business. The way he rejoiced at his discovery looked very strange from the outside. The disciples were looking at him askew. Saliva was coming out of his mouth, and at the same time, he was staring at Uyaming. Naturally, he was thought to be some kind of pervert, but it was as if he didn't even notice it. Feng Yun had been looking for a suitable disciple for a long time and finally found one, but decided not to stop there and continue to look for other talents. At the same time, he decided to farm Uyaming. Such subconscious fights had become a habit. Feng Yun had learned to control himself perfectly in reality and fight in the mirror space. Because of this, he was able to conserve his time as well as my new techniques and attributes. As he wandered around the area, he didn't see a single talent. They were probably all on missions or in the tower, but he's gotta earn points to get there. He watched someone, but immediately returned to the mirrored space. 
Ao Yaming was defeated, Feng Yun was in a sword battle and managed to defeat a mid-level master. Right now, defeating a mid-ranked master was much easier for him than it had been during the exam. The young man had managed to knock out a medium-ranked metal talent the first time. It would be summed up with Feng Yun's initial rank metal talent. Now, Feng Yun's connection to the metal attribute is much higher than Ou Yaming's. After such a win, the guy's excitement was turned up. Now he wanted to knock out the practice metal shine. But does he really need practice to go on a mission later? It seems like Feng Yun had a better plan. Meanwhile, in reality, he was standing in front of a huge tabla. Obviously, he wanted to get into the arena. A month later, Feng Yun continued to do battle with Yaming and was easily defeated. This time, he had managed to knock out a level 3 metal shine practice. The very practice he had longed to obtain. The initial stage of the development of metal shine practice concentrates. Metal energy in the abdomen, forming the source of metal energy. Middle stage. Final formation of the source of metal energy and control over the movement of energy within the body. Perfection. Pure metal energy concentrates in the small luminary, giving access to a vast amount of energy. To put it simply, practicing with the attribute is gathering energy scattered throughout the body and feeling it. But Uyaming had only developed this practice to the middle stage. Feng Yun wasn't going to stop and wanted to continue farming with Uyaming. But if Feng Yun wanted to develop the practice of shining metal to perfection, he would have to make his own efforts. Basically, he didn't have to be forced for a long time. Feng Yun immediately started cultivating the metal shine. He sat in the lotus posture with a straight back placing his hands on his lap. He was tense, but also relaxed at the same time. This state of mind helped him cultivate. Feng Yun had been training for quite some time, but it was time to try out his strength in the arena and thus earn points. He immediately went to the training room. There was a lot of gym equipment, like dumbbells and barbells and special equipment for push-ups. Right in front of him, he turned his attention to the attack power detection obelisk. The obelisk could indicate the level of attack power by lighting inlaid energy stones. One lighted stone would indicate the attack strength of an entry-level master. Two stones would indicate the level of an intermediate-ranked master, and so on. In the training room, Feng Yun was now not alone. He had unwanted guests visiting him. They had been looking for the guy for a month and a half, but they knew he was sitting in the dormitory, but they were not going to visit him. They were waiting. The students wanted to show him his place. Just because he had killed 40 scum didn't mean he was worthy of being in this academy. And then they told him that if he wanted to live, he should return to the outer city immediately. Feng Yun didn't pay any attention to them and was still standing with his back to them, showing them all his indifference. But the students didn't like it either. And they wanted to help him make a decision already. Feng Yun still didn't answer them anything and just decided to show on the obelisk what level he was at. They too took notice of the obelisk, at first skeptical, but when they saw that the stone was showing the masters of the highest rank, they fidgeted. Now they realized who they were standing in front of and who they were starting to rant at. After he saw his level, he turned to his abusers, asking them to repeat what they had told him. The students were scared to death. Feng Yun's eyes were burning with fire, and he was beginning to resemble a monster. Many of them realized that it was better not to bring the young man to such a state, but many realized it late. They abruptly changed the topic to a neutral one, like there was ice cream in the cafeteria or the weather was bad. Some people started to talk about relationships or made unrelated sounds as they neatly walked away from Feng Yun. However, he himself stood puzzled, realizing which cowards to him were trying to pick a fight. Feng Yun is capable of attacking with the strength of a high rank master. If someone has brains, they won't go up against him in the arena, except that the young man thought that he would have an even stronger attack. Because with his current strength, he wouldn't be able to break the academy's record. But there was no choice. You'll have to complete several tasks to get points. Fights with the best help you to become stronger. Feng Yun went to the Pure Energy Tower. There were a lot of people there as usual. He came across a table that had a task. The assignment was to find a Stasi flower. The reward was 200 points. Stasi flower grows in snowy forests. Recommended rank is master. The task is divided by difficulty into white, gray, black, and red ranks. White rank is suitable for beginner rank masters, gray rank is medium, and red rank is high. Finding this flower was a white rank task. For Feng Yun it was a waste of time, he thought it was worth starting a gray ranked task. At the assignment table, Feng Yun noticed a guy. He was too young for a mid rank master. But then what was he doing in the gray assignment department? Could it be that he had just come to have a look? 
Gray Rank's assignment was to assist law enforcement in finding members of the Blood Spike Alliance. This organization was committing crimes, killing high-ranking citizens of the base, and undermining order. The reward for this assignment was 2,000 points. Such an assignment suited our hero much better, and he immediately took it. The other students watched him with surprise. Not everyone would take a Gray-ranked assignment. However, going against the Bloody Spike was just suicide. The students hustled and thought of stopping it. The Blood Spike Alliance is a secret society. Feng Yun can attract a lot of attention this way, but the guy knew what he was doing. They had something he wanted, and he was going behind the backs of law enforcement, so he wouldn't be detected. This is the Starlight Base Law Enforcement Headquarters. The four members of this headquarters sat around the table and thought. They were surprised that someone had accepted the assignment to assist in the removal of the Blood Spike Alliance. Zhang Tao, the squad leader, was reviewing Feng Yun's information. Zhang Tao was a man aged 38, had cultivated to a middle rank master, and had three third level techniques. Zhou Wei, 28 years old, member of a law enforcement squad, a mid level master with two second and third level techniques. Feng Yun's information showed that he was an entry level master, making it even more surprising that someone had taken on this task. Sun Xiaomei is 23 years old, a member of the law enforcement squad. A mid-level master possesses one second-level heaven step technique, practice with the tree attribute, and a talent for wood. The girl admired the fact that a young man at 15 years old is a master. Wu Hualun was 27 years old, a member of a law enforcement squad, a mid-rank master, and mastered two second and third level techniques. He believed that in battle, experience came first, not cultivation. In any case, Feng Yun was almost here, since he was a junior disciple then he should be taken care of on the mission. Feng Yun had already entered the office and found the members of the law enforcement squad sitting at the table. He clarified if they were posting the assignment to find the Blood Spike Union. The squad leader greeted the young man with a smile and offered his hand for a shake. They shook hands, and the head introduced himself as Zhang Tao. Behind him also came up his boys, whom he also introduced by name. Feng Yun didn't just say hello to them, but also scanned each one. He was unspeakably happy to meet a master with a tree attribute, and even a middle-ranked one at that. This was the truest gift for him. Masters with wood attribute had extraordinary healing abilities and were ahead above masters with water attribute. But more importantly, it was that he could become an alchemist thanks to the attributes of wood and fire. But only our hero was confused by one thing. It was a girl. He did not want to fight with her. He simply will not raise his hand on her. In the future, he will sooner or later encounter a female enemy. Is it really going to run away in shame? But in the real battle, he wasn't going to give up. Sun Xiaomi found Feng Yun very cute, and the guys got mad at him for staring at a girl. Since this was Feng Yun's first time on a law enforcement department assignment, he was tasked to simply watch the rear, which couldn't be better. 